ask that individuals who are speaking to an application today please use the microphones provided to ensure that all discussions can be heard clearly. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and it is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with, Missis with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment for the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provision of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must complete a decision request form. These forms are available and you can find them at the end of the horseshoe. Please ensure that you include your email address on this form because the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by mail. Once completed, please give the card to a staff member seated to my right. If you do not agree with the decision of the committee, decisions may be appealed to the local Toronto Local Appeal Body, also known as TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. To ensure a fair and timely hearing, I will vet the agenda to determine which applications can be dealt with immediately and which applications have individuals other than the applicant or agent who wish to address the committee. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda and will ask for individuals to identify themselves. If there are people in interest, the matter will be held until all non-contested applications have been dealt with. If your item is held, we strongly encourage the applicant or agent to meet with interested parties outside of the hearing room to discuss and or resolve any concerns or issues. If no person is present in interest, the item will be called in the order listed on the agenda for non-contested applications. When an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with his or her presentation if required. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you're reaching the five minute mark. When addressing the committee, please come forward to the podium, clearly state your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. If you have a written submission that you read from, please hand it to the Deputy Secretary Treasurer when you're done, and she's seated to my right. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee of the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain extensive revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure that the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice are informed of the changes. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. If there are several speakers sharing the same view, please select a spokesperson to present the group's opinion. We want to hear your views, however, covering the same points is not required, nor will it advance your cause. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of discussions and the application will then be taken into committee for a decision. Panel members and staff, are there any declarations of interest in this time slot? Uh, Madam Chair, yes, I have a declaration to make on um, item 29, 266 Bain Avenue. Um, I own property within the 60 meter notification zone of this application. Okay, thank you, Ms. Valentini. Anyone else declaration of interest? Okay, uh, Madam Deputy Secretary Treasurer, have you received any requests for deferral in this um, time slot? I have not for the afternoon, no. Okay, is there anybody uh, present who is uh, interested in deferring an application in the time slot today? 
What's up? No. Okay. And there are no files to be closed in this time slot either. Okay, so I will now vet the agenda. First item is item number 21, 76 Geary Avenue. Is the applicant here? Is there anyone in interest? Okay. Item number 22, 31 Marlboro Avenue. Anyone in interest? Item number 23, 305 Rosemary Road. Anyone in interest? Item number 24, 976 Shaw Street. Is there anyone in interest? Item number 25, 442 Margareta Street. Anyone in interest? Item number 26, 32 Triller Avenue. Is there anyone in interest for Triller? Item number 27, 31 Herbert Avenue. Anyone in interest? Item number 28, 54 King Edward Avenue. Okay, anyone in interest? Item number 29, 266 Bain Avenue. Is there anyone in interest? Item number 30, 9 Hazelwood Avenue. Anyone in interest? Okay, so there are no holds in this time slot. I think that's the first for me. <laughs> All right, so let's start with item number 21, 76 Geary Avenue. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have email correspondence from the assistant planner in community planning, uh, the acting coordinator right of way, as well as the traffic planning technologist in traffic planning. We have a staff report from community planning as well as the manager for permits and enforcement parking. We have correspondence in support from number 52 Geary Avenue. So can I have your name, please? Uh, Enzo Lacassano, I am the agent. Okay, panel members, do we need a presentation or can we go to questions? Um, to you, Madam Chair, I just want to make one correction on variance one. Uh, in the purpose of the application, it says four live work units, and for some reason in the first Variance that said two, but it should be four. Ah, okay. <clears throat> okay. Madam Chair, I also have uh, support letters for the file. Oh, okay, I'll take those. So that's in addition to what we already have. Right. Okay. Okay, panel members, do you have any questions of Mr. Locasano? One of the address. Sorry? Address. I'll pass it down. Do you want me to read them all? Okay. So the, the uh, support letters are from 68 Geary, 52 Geary, 100 Geary, 508 Delaware Avenue North, and 344 Westmore, Moreland, Westmoreland Avenue, Unit 104A. Questions? I have a question. <clears throat> I'm sure. Does, uh, have you, Mr. Lacosano, have you uh, looked at the planning department memo? Um, I haven't. I didn't see it uh, last night. I didn't check it this morning. Um, there is a memo. Okay, uh, we've been working with the planning department for over a year and a half. So oh, that's we're interesting. There's a condition. Yes, we know the condition. Oh, you know the condition. Yeah. Okay, so what is your view on the condition, the three year time limit for the variance? I understand they're undertaking a study of the area? That's correct, for the three years, maximum three years. We know that. And are you, is your client okay with that? Three yes. Years? Then we will see you again in three years. And they're also asking that uh, the, any work done be done, constructed substantially in accordance with the plans? That's correct. With that from your view? No. No. The idea behind the three years was that the the area, as you know, is changing very rapidly, and this is a very oddball uh, group of buildings which were residential back in the 50s. There were actually residential buildings sitting there. Uh, they were torn down, and over the years, that area became industrial. Uh, with that one residential piece left over, which is 68, which is in an R zone, which is quite interesting. 
Yeah, I have the, uh, the zoning map from the uh, zoning examiner that he sent me. So 70, 72, and 76 are under uh, I-2. But 68, that little sliver, is part of R2Z0.6. The, under the old bylaw. Under the new bylaw, it's a RD, I believe. So over the years, that has changed. Where originally it was in our zone. And then they got it changed, uh, I believe it was in the 70s. It was changed to an I-2. Uh, and 68 was originally a residential building, uh, and then they built the, in, the industrial part, or the industrial building. Um, we believe, I, I think it was in 2000? 68? Yeah, it was in 2000. So, again, we're not really touching the mass of the building. Uh, the parking, we believe, is, should be grandfathered in, because at some point, that parking was existing since the 50s. And there's a curb cut right across there. So that's something we'll have to talk to Transportation and Works. So yeah, you've seen the Transportation memo then. Yes. They're asking for you to submit it out. For Boulevard yeah. Park, yeah. We'll, we'll have to deal with them. Are there any other questions? No? Madam Chairman, if, if no one else has any questions, I'd like to move approval of the application. <clears throat> Excuse me, I think it's a, a very reasonable proposal. It meets the four tests. And should it be that uh, the study of the area generates uh, an alternate use suggestion, then the three-year time limit allows the uh, the city and the applicant to negotiate. That's the idea. So uh, my, uh, my motion is conditional upon the planning department conditions, which you have before you, and the transportation services conditions about um, the boulevard parking spaces. Yep. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll, I'll second it. It seems to be a good fit for the short-term version. Yep. Is, um, isn't that the condition? The no, it's not a condition. It's not they a just, condition. Yeah. No. They just, it's a requirement. Okay. Fine. That's correct. So you're advised. Yeah, we've been advised. Okay, <laughs> so I have a motion to approve, including the November 4th planning report moved by Ms. Paul. All in favor? Thank you so much. Okay. Their application is approved. All right, item number 22, 31 Marlboro Avenue. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a previous committee decision regarding this property. We have email correspondence from the assistant planner, staff report from the manager of permits and enforcement parking, and support correspondence from number 29, which is adjacent. Okay, we need your name. My name is Mike D'Oliveira. I'm here representing 31 Marlboro um, from Replacement Design, address 911 Davenport Road. Okay, panel members, do we need a presentation or can we go to questions? I just have one question. There was yep. a previous approval for 1.09 FSI. Is that what, the pro what it is now? Uh, that is currently what the property is, yes. Okay. I also have an additional letter of support for the adjacent neighbor, 33. Oh, there's six different addresses? Oh, one for all of us. There you go. I only need one. Thanks. No, just take one there. Oh, I was going to give her this. Okay. So this, um, this is the owner of number 33. And are you familiar with the, what the Transportation Services Department is requesting in terms of restoring the uh, paved area on the City Boulevard to soft landscape? Yes, we are aware. Anybody has any other questions? No. no? 
I'm prepared to bring a motion forward on this matter for approval. Um, in my view, this meets the four tests. We've heard that the uh, GFA is currently at 1.09, and I don't see the it, it going up to 1.15 is minor in my view. Um, and my motion for approval is subject to the conditions set out in the Transportation Services Memo about restoring the boulevard to softscaping. Okay. Okay. I have a motion to approve, including the transportation condition. Second. second, or moved by Ms. Valentini, second by Mr. Paul. Okay, the applications are approved. All right, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Item number 23, 305 Rosemary Road. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and no correspondence. Have your name, please. First name, Gabe. Last name, Faraone. Sorry, how do you spell your last name? F is in Frank. A-R-A-O-N-E. Faraone. Faraone. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? Okay. Do we have any questions? Questions? A lot of large. Yeah. yeah. Madam Chairman, if no one has any questions, I'd like to move approval of the application without conditions. <clears throat> I think it's a very straightforward application. Clearly meets the four tests. Do I have a seconder? Okay. Have a motion to approve. Moved by Mr. Neffel, seconded by Ms. Larson. All in favor? Okay, Thank you. Have approved. a good day. Thank you. Okay, the next item is item number 24, 976 Shaw Street. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and we have a staff report from permit for parking. All right, can we have your name, please? Yes, thank you. My name is Joseph Mazzatelli. Okay. Um, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go straight to questions? May I present something to the committee? Sure. Yes, what thank you. Uh, I have two uh, neighbor supporting letters uh, oh. immediately adjacent to our property. Oh, and also, right. yes, okay. and also 12 similar variances, uh, approvals by the committee in the neighborhood. Okay. It might be easier if, can I take these? Can you just, can I give you back this? And can you just tell us where these um, yeah. approvals are and what proximity? I think that's easier. Yeah, so of these uh, 12 approvals, there were others um, as well. They range in uh, GFA coverage from uh, 1.3 uh, all the way up to 2, 1.8, 2, and even three times coverage. So there's a, a large array of approvals of uh, similar and larger uh, renovations and additions of, in the area. And they range within two or three blocks of our location. Okay. So your submission is what you're proposing is in keeping with what's in the neighborhood with the character. Yes, and, and really the only way to improve a narrow property on a narrow lot is to do a third floor addition. And that's triggering the variances that we have. We have existing parking, we have one space, and um, we've sloped the front and the rear roofs to minimize the impact of the, the roof of the third floor addition. Am I correct that also reflects the attached semi also has a similar roof form so that, are the roof forms compatible? It, yes, I believe so, yes. The, one neighbor to the south of us has a rear addition as well already. So I'm more concerned with the one you're attached. This is a semi. The house you're attached to has a similar roof form. They, they have a third floor in a... In a no, they, they currently only are only two-story, but they're considering the third floor addition, yes. So um, what would be helpful... Um, I don't have my note for my site inspection. Um, it would be helpful to see your elevation in context with the na adjacent neighbor.
I'm, I'm concerned, as we always are, when we have semi-detached that they fit with one another. So do you have anything that shows how this elevation treatment relates to it, what you're talking No, I've only drawn our, our proposal. Uh, but the existing, currently there are two semis existing with two story each. So we are adding the third floor, so we will be taller. Uh, but this neighbor is in support of this. So is this, just looking, refreshing my memory as to what the house looks like. Oh, I appreciate there's a lot of them that we see. Um, it's a, oh, yeah. okay, the attached, sorry. is the attached neighbor a flat level two-story house? Yes. Is it a part of a row then? Because it looks like there's a corner. It looks like there's three, uh, one is not, a, it's, it's a, I'm not sure if it's a row house, but it's, it's three dwellings that are very close to each other, yes. Two oh, are okay. definitely semis. So one semi and then one that's attached, attached somewhat, yes. It looks like it's attached. And the attached neighbor has no objection. That's right. He's supporting it in the letter. Is it undergoing renovations right now, the attached neighbor? They're I think they're doing internal renovations. And what about the neighbor on the other side? He's also supporting us. How will the height compare? He's to a three he, he, he is a three-story, yes. And will the height be com compared? We will, be, we will be similar to him, okay. yes. Um, I did have another question. In terms of floor space index, you've indicated that there are others in the neighborhood that this is... Yes, we're, we're asking 1.62, and, and all the the 12 approved variances that I've, uh, I have with me range from 1.6 to 1.8 to 2, mm -hmm. and so even three times coverage in the and neighborhood. Current dwellings in the neighborhood, may you know, neighbors and so forth, have to, don't have variances. How do most houses? Are most houses over the? Ex well, there's there's um, a neighbor about six houses away, and he's I think at 1.3. Uh, we're asking for 1.62. Okay. So it's not uncommon to have a third floor addition. You're going to match the building that you're not attached to. Flat roof one, and then beside it is another. Yes, uh, yes. Any other questions, General Member? What, what's the existing GFA? Right now? Uh, we're already slightly over. We're 1.05 already. Oh, you're already at 1.05. It's already slightly over. I mean, because the permitted is 0. 0.6, so yes. you're well yes. over what's permitted right yes. now as of the existing. Yes, we're already. And, and really, all the houses are over. Yes. <laughs> okay. It should really be one times coverage. <laughs> Questions? Okay, we'll take it into committee. Do I have any comments? Uh, did you see the request by Transportation Services to apply for a front yard parking permit? Yes, but, but they support it. We, we do that annually. We need to go in because I guess if there's a change in ownership. Yes, now that the owners are very interested in doing that, okay. yes. Thank you. Nobody else has any other questions. I'm prepared to bring a motion forward. And, and the, one last comment. The city plan is not objecting, so yes. Yep. Um, my motion is going to be for approval of the application. I initially, on the face of it, the numbers do look high, but you've explained and satisfied my concern about the FSI. Um, it seems to be compatible with other variances in the neighborhood. And in fact, the existing house is well over the permitted FSI, so you've alleviated any concerns I've had about that. As well, I think it will be, uh, although it'll differ from the attached neighbor, it will be compatible with the neighbor next door in terms of heights. And, um, and I believe uh, you're proposing a sloped roof at the front? Yes. yes. So that'll mim minimize any impact um, from that. So I'm happy to bring forward a motion for approval. I feel it meets the four tests. And I don't think the transportation, no, it's, it's a con just advisory. So it's not a without, condition. No, no, without conditions. OK, do I have a seconder? OK. I have a motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you. The next item is item number 25, 442 Margareta Street. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and a previous decision that affects this um, property. Can I have your name, please? My name is David Stickney. I'm the agent for the owner. 
Okay, panel members, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Do we need an applicate or a uh, presentation yeah. here? Uh, anyone ready to move a motion? Question. I don't no. think so. Madam Chairman, I'd like to bring a motion of approval without condition. I think it is uh, very straightforward. Clearly meets the test for variance and fits into the neighborhood. Okay, motion to approve, moved by Mr. Nichol, seconded by Ms. Larson. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, item 26, 32 Triller Avenue. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Covering letter from Kamal Matar, the applicant. We have email correspondence from the assistant planner, community planning, engineering technical course coordinator from development engineering, as well as the acting coordinator right away management. And we have staff reports from planning, permits and enforcement parking. We have correspondence expressing concern from number 35 Triller. We have opposition correspondence from 1553 Queen Street West. So, can I have your name, please? Kamal Matar. Okay. Uh, your address? 32 Triller. I'm the owner. Oh, you're the owner. Okay. Panel members, uh, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? Uh, Madam Chair, I don't need a presentation. I just wanted to clarify. This is all brought about, I believe, by your desire to have a, an electronic car and that necessitates parking on the property rather than the street. Am I correct? That's what I gelled it down to. That, that is correct. So I've installed an eight kilowatt solar panel array on the roof, 500 square feet on south facing um, with the intention of being able to adopt an electric vehicle. I, I was living in a, in a big condominium and I have uh, three boys and I was hoping to move into an electric vehicle and the plan was, I, I mean, I went ahead with it quickly, so the solar array is installed, but I don't have parking okay. or access to a charging station. Okay. All right, any other questions? So... Um, so you are you are aware of the planning report recommending refusal of several variances as well as transportation doesn't support it? Yeah, I'm I'm aware. In terms of other, I, from what I remember correctly, in in as in terms of this stretch of your street, um, I would say there's probably there are not a lot there are no front yard parking pads. Is that correct? Um, grassy. Maybe a few driveways. There, there are a lot of uh, front there parking. Are a lot of pads in this area, front yard parking pads. Yes, on on Triller Avenue and the adjacent uh, Street Wilson. Um, that, okay, so there are driveways uh, on Triller. Uh, as well as dry, uh, people who park on those driveways that lead to some parking in the back. On the west side of Triller, uh, there are also parking pads on the west side of Triller. There are uh, less, uh, uh, but there are a couple just south, on the, closer to King Street on Triller. Uh, and there are a lot on Wilson, which is the adjacent street. Um, the issue is parking is not permitted. Yes. Parking pads, and I, I realize that there may be driveways, but technically they should be leading to a parking space at the back of the house. They shouldn't be parking in the front, in front of the front wall of the yeah. house. So that's the issue, I think, from my perspective in this application. Is the, the, there are both. Um, I, 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 I did have some um, professional Google images that would point those out. Um, um, in addition, the, the other concern that I have is that by um, using a front yard parking space, you need access to that, and you're basically effectively removing one on-street parking space. And the on-street parking space would be available to anyone, whereas the one in your front yard is only available to you. And one would argue, I would think, um, that that's somewhat discriminatory, that in terms of the neighborhood, you've lost a parking space. Do you have any comment about that? 
so, so my only comment to that is all the houses in the neighborhood have laneway access and a garage because mine is adjacent to a condominium in the in the back side on the um, west side um, i don't have any laneway access in fact i have a large lot where the the footprint of the house is only about one quarter of the lot I, uh, because there is no garage in the back, there's no laneway access, so I have a big green space, um, massive trees. Uh, I have four, well, three Japanese maples in the front, um, but I, I'm, it's a distinct house. It's practically, uh, from my examination, it's the only house in the neighborhood without parking either. Um, all of them have rear parking or, and or laneway access, and, and many of them have front pad parking as well in addition to... And yours is unique in that you have neither. You don't, you don't have parking. It, it, it's unique in that it's a detached... You can't side yard to get to the back, can you? It's not correct. There's no rear access because of the proximity to the, to the neighbor. You only have about, about uh, 12 to 18 inches on one side and about 36 um, well, three feet on the other side. So there is no rear access and there is no laneway access. Can, can you, I, I just have an overhead, but can you, you can put it on the overhead, but where's the laneway? I can't even see how you get into a laneway behind. If you want to put it on the overhead and draw it in, that would be good. Uh, the red mark is you. Uh, red teardrop. Got it. Okay. So, um, so the west side of. Can you put it on the overhead? Sorry. Kind of just the, point us that way we can see it. Um, the side of Triller Avenue has a laneway back back here. In fact, these all hard to see here, but. This, this is access to the laneway. Um, next to me, there's a, uh, there's a, you can subtle, but this is the access to the back where they have parking in the back. Uh, back here and back. This is pad parking and, and access in the back. Um, the one on the left, right, where you just said it's the, the yeah, the left, that house right there. Yes. So that there's a driveway, and then are you saying they've widened it in the front and they're using it as a parking pad? That is correct. It's, it's, it's parking for both houses. Um, the one, the one. Uh -huh. Excuse me, I didn't, I didn't understand that. These two houses here are... Is that a mutual driveway? Correct. Okay. I, I access back, but only for this condominium <coughs> building. It's, right. Uh, You don't know if the parking pad is legal either on that house. Yeah. I, I just moved in six months ago, yeah, so, so they were all... quite possible that that's not a legal spot. They most likely were grandfathered in. I don't, I don't know when it became prohibited to have front pad parking. I'm, I'm guessing it was like that at the beginning because area, so I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't say in, in the report.
Yeah, so, okay, so the, the bottom line is, is even if the variances are granted, you're not going to get a legal parking spot, so it's going to be for you, Madam Chair, if you grant the variance for the front yard parking, then right of way management would be forced to give them access all over the boulevard. So the municipal code only governs the city portion of the of the front yard, which is the boulevard, and they don't want anyone parking on the boulevard. The city could. Park. They, they but could, but you. Is part of the issue though as well it says the front yard parking pad is not going to be wholly located on the lot it's going to overhang anyway so mm. will they not need to get a license for the park right and they won't get the so but if but if the committee permits they'll do it in most of it then it ties their hands and it's yeah because they they can't right but then they wouldn't get a permit for that Perhaps that other part, it's very complicated, yeah. which is why they're okay. They've recommended so, what they've recommended. I, I was willing to move the front porch in order to inclusively install the parking pad on the property and not encroach That's if necessary. I think, I think the issue is in this area, correct? The city's policy is pretty clear, they don't want front yard parking pads, yes. Um, and yeah. Madam no, Chairman, yeah, if, does anyone have any questions? No, I, don't see how I, I don't see how we can improve this. I, as much as I applaud your, um, your intent to use solar vehicle, which I think in the long run is an extremely good idea, um, given the restrictions in this area, I don't think that's going to be possible in this area, and therefore I'm going to move that the application not be approved. Um, 1, 3, and 4. Oh, I don't have yeah. trouble. Yeah. yeah, I don't have trouble with variance number 2. So I, I guess I would change my motion to not approve variance 1, 3, and 4, um, but approve uh, variance number 2. And given that I'm not recommending the front yard parking pad, it doesn't seem to me that I need the conditions because the motion itself reflects the condition. Okay, I have um, a motion to approve variance number two and refuse variance number one, three, and four. Moved by Mr. Niffel. Do I have a seconder? Okay, seconded by Ms. Bayat. Favor? Okay. So you have approval for variance number two. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. That's the addition, correct? Yes. yes. One, three, and four relates to the parking. One, so the parking. Yeah, one, three, and approved. four are refused. Number two is approved. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, item number 27, 31 Herbert Avenue. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. And we have a seven signature petition in support. Very straightforward application. Can I have your name, please? Uh, Jordan Perry, agent for the homeowners. Panel members, do we need a presentation? No. Okay. Uh, motion? Yep. I'll put forward a motion. I think this is very minor, and I would put forward a motion to accept. I have a motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Larson, seconded by Second. Mr. I'm Carlson. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. That's four Murphy years. Brown, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> by, by Mr. Nipple. <laughs> Okay, your application is approved. Thank you, committee members. Thank you. Okay, the next item is item number 28, 54 King Edward Avenue. Okay, panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and we have email correspondence from the assistant <coughs> planner and a staff report from the manager of permits and enforced parking. And can I have your name, please? Madam Chair, my name is Russ Gregory. I'm the agent on behalf of the owners of the property. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? Okay, does anyone have any questions? Questions? Okay, so we'll take it into committee. 
Who would like to move a motion? Okay. Anybody ready to move a motion or are we? I'm prepared to move a motion. I think this is fairly straightforward. Uh, clearly meets the test and um, I, again, I believe fits into the community. So I'm moving approval of the application. Um, there's a comment for transportation services which you need to know about that if you make any changes, you must uh, apply for permits for transportation services, but I assume you know that. Yes, I understand. Okay, Thanks. I have a motion to approve, moved by Mr. Niffold. Do I have a okay. seconder? Okay, Ms. Valenti, Valentini, all in favor? Okay, your application is approved. You. Ah, okay. Ms. Valentini has a conflict. So the next item is 266 Bain Avenue. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have an e email from the assistant planner, community planning, a staff report from the director, community planning, and six form letters in support. Okay, your name, please. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Marin Zabzuni. I'm the agent for the homeowners. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or would you like to go to questions? I don't need a presentation. Anybody need a presentation? Okay, does anyone have any questions? Are you aware of the planning department recommendation? Yes. Are you agreeing with it? Yes. Madam Chairman, if uh, did you have a question? I don't have a question. No. If no one else has any questions, I'd like to uh, move approval of the application subject to the condition recommended by community planning. Um, I believe it clearly meets the four tests um, and is consistent with the character of the community. Okay, do I have a seconder? Okay, motion to approve, moved by Mr. Niffel, seconded by Mr. Bayat. All in favor? Applications approved. Thank you. Item number 30, 9 Hazelwood Avenue. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. And we have one form letter in support, signed by number 7, adjacent to the property. And we need your name. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of committee. My name is uh, David Smith. I'm here representing the homeowners at 9 Hazelwood Avenue. Okay, do we need a presentation, panel no. members? No. Do we have any questions? No questions? No? no? I'm prepared to bring a motion on this matter. I reviewed all the materials. Um, in my view, this meets the four tests for minor variance. So I'm bringing forward a motion for approval of the application without any conditions. Second motion. Okay, motion to approve, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipple. All in favor, your application is approved. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're adjourned till 2.30.
didn't. They had too much to pick up. Oh, I know. It's a, yeah, okay. I should have asked Nancy. I realized she's got one. Oh, does she? You know, we, I don't own one. We I like through, them, but I don't. I don't understand them. But I don't understand a lot of things. But <laughs> <laughs> we went through the uh, center. They have I shock It's a little bit of lace and a little bit of this. And it was $89. And then I... I, I Then they don't last. Very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> very pretty. Really? He's been in love with her ever Aww. since. Yeah. Fifty years. 
And she graduated. What do we do at home? We we'll get a laptop. We go and go through email to get something, and you download it in. Log in. But if what's here, will we get them at the same time? Will we get them on the Friday? Evening? Well, if we've done a review, now, now, we're going to have to wait to them and can you attach them to the file? You'll have to know. So we're in item number 18, and you send us a late number 18 planning report. We have to remember there is one? Oh, God. So what you're choosing is this. We're going to miss what we're getting used to. We're going to miss. Somebody's going to have to tell us. You make notes. We both yeah, make. Yeah, yeah. I make notes, and that's how. Can you make it on the computer? So, and they will stay with the file number. So, if I'm number 18 again, and I make notes, it'll stay with number 18. 
So it's like the judging files I get and when I'm judging things. Actually, my partner thought that that one was virus, so he erased it. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're ready for the 2.30 time slot. Um, are there people here who've never been to committee before? Yes? I'll give you a, a really brief synopsis. Okay. <laughs> so um, basically the committee uh, considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to a property, permission to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, as well as consent to sever the property to create new lots. Uh, basically, if, if you want to receive a copy of the decision or if you are speaking to an application, there are there's a decision cards that you, can, you need to fill in and give to staff. Okay? And make sure you put your email address on there and fill it out clearly so that you receive the appropriate correspondence. And um, so if you don't agree with the committee's decision, you can appeal it to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, which is called the T-Lab. Um, in some circumstances, it goes to a, a different body called the Local Planning Appeal, Appeal Tribunal, but most of our decisions get appealed to the T-Lab. Okay, uh, once we get started, I'm going to vet all the, uh, the agenda in this time slot. And any, any item that's contested will be held and dealt with after all the non-contested items have been dealt with. So if um, people are in interest, then we ask them to identify themselves when I'm going through the, uh, through the agenda. And if an application is uncontested, we may ask for a presentation or we may just ask questions or we may just make a decision if it's a straightforward application. If there are contested applications, the speakers all have five minutes each to speak to the application, and we would ask the applicant at that point to give a short presentation. If you have a written submission that you read from, we ask you to give it to the Deputy Secretary Treasurer. To my right here. Okay, um, and basically the order is the applicant goes first, and, it, and then the objector speak and then the applicant has a chance to rebut any any of the arguments made people don't agree with the application and basically that's the process okay all right um madam deputy secretary treasurer um are there any files to be closed in this time slot Okay, and any deferrals? Okay, how about deferrals? Then I won't ask you again. Okay, are there any declarations of interest in this time slot? No. No? Okay, are there any applicants here in the 2.30 time slot that wish to defer or withdraw their application? No? Okay. So, I will now vet the agenda. So the first item is item number 31. 35 Old Forest Hill Road, and I'm just vetting right now. So you're here, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, is there anybody here in interest? Nope. Item number 32, 234 Pape Avenue. Is the applicant here? Anybody in interest? Item 33, 55 Young Street. Anybody in interest? Item 34, 188 Arlington Avenue. Anybody in interest? 35, 102 Robina Avenue. Anyone in interest? 36, 29 Queensdale Avenue. Anybody in interest? Item number 37, 8 Rush Home Park Crescent. Anyone in interest? Item number 38, 962 St. Clarence Avenue. Anyone in interest? Item number 39, 516 Markham Street. 
Okay, anyone in interest? And number 40, 78 Gormley Avenue. Okay, anyone in interest? Yes? You're opposing? No. Are you speak? Do you are you are you the owner or you're just here? Okay. So once again, there are no holes in this time slot. So we'll yeah. So we'll start with item number 31, 35 Old Forest Road. Sorry, Old Forest Hill Road. And panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and a previous decision that affects the property. So we need your name and your address. Uh, my name is Leith Elbahrani, and I'm the uh, agent uh, representing the owner. Okay. Panel members, do we need a presentation, or can we go straight to... We have two letters of support, actually. Sorry? Two letters of support. Okay. I'll take those. Thank you. Okay, so these are from 56 Hill Home and 31 Old Forest Hill Road. Okay, panel members, do you need a presentation or no? Okay, so we'll go to questions then. Anybody have any questions? Um, I, I do. I think looking at the survey and the, the plans, in terms of the, on paper, the depth and length variance look like they're significant, but from the way I read the plans, it looks like it, does it match neighboring properties in terms of how far this addition is going to be going back? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have a presentation if you'd like me to. I don't think we need the whole presentation, okay. but I just, so, I wouldn't, unless my colleague. No, it's not significant. Actually, it's we're building flush with the existing face of the house. We're removing the existing addition, and, and we're actually back. pushing it back in, so it's five feet back, so it's bigger rear yard. Wider, it's two-story, yeah. but it's not going to be as deep as the existing condition. Yes, and it's, it's in the atrium, so it's like it's not too livable. Story. But in terms of neighboring properties, it's going to be compatible with neighboring yes, properties yes. in terms of the depth. Because yes, right. it looks like the property at 37 is quite, is fairly deep. Yes, yes. You're not going back further than that, is that correct? No. Okay. The, um, the previous approval in 2005 was for 0.449 times. Do you know if that's the size of the house now? Is it 0.449? No, it's right now it's, uh, it's actually we're going to 52%. Yeah, I know you, what you're going to, but do you know what the existing house is now? Like, did they ever build I, it to that approval, like to 0.449? I'm not sure, but I know they did an addition at the back mm -hmm. of okay, the ground so floor. so probably. Okay. But we're removing that addition, we're just... Right, no, I understand. I just wanted to know if it was already higher than what's permitted. Mm -hmm. And then the two neighbors, actually immediate neighbors, they're supporting. So one at the back and one at the side. So I have a related question. Is the existing building, is the length of the existing building more than 17 meters? Yes. yes. What is it? The current length. Because it sounds as though, as my colleague had indicated, some of these look like they're very large, but some of it well, must be existing conditions. Actually, yeah, it's partial. It's in right now. Use a scale just to sort of check. Just roughly is fine. I just, I'm just assuming you're over the bylaw already. It is, yeah. I mean, it's the we're going further in from the existing, so we're reducing the sort of uh, set. I think the only thing is we're having a sort of a, um, a basement ex uh, addition, the basement, and the terrace is sort of going back. Goes out further. So, mm -hmm. which is less than uh, four feet in height from the grade. So. Okay, any other questions? No. No, I'm ready to bring a motion forward. I think you've, you've, you've demonstrated that currently, the current depth and length of the building already exceed the bylaw, and in fact, you're going less further back than the existing yeah. house. You're just going up two stories. Two stories um, covering the existing windows. Yes, I understand. And so, as well, I also understand that this is 
uh, fits in with what is going on in neighboring properties. It looks like the property at 37 goes back further than what is being proposed here in any event. Because when you look at the face of it, the depth and length variants look great, but they really aren't. I'm of a view that they meet the four tests. They're compatible with what's going on in the neighborhood, and they fit with, well within neighboring with neighboring properties. So my motion is going to be for approval of the application. I have a motion to approve the application, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Niffel. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you. Okay. All right. The next item is 234 Pape Avenue. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and correspondence expressing concern from number 232 Pape. Name. Jeff Karkowski, 234 Pape Avenue. Right, panel members, do you need a presentation or can we go to questions? Oh, I just, I have a question if no one needs a presentation. Yeah. Um, my only notes in going through your application were that there appears to be a privacy issue yeah. with the deck. Have you got any proposals for um, screening the deck from your neighbors? Uh, we do. So we spoke to the neighbors and their concern was just that it wouldn't be a glass railing and, and it's not actually planned to be a glass, glass railing. It's meant to be closed off. And we do propose a, a privacy screen on our, on our neighbor on the other side as well. Do you have a, because I'd like to put that in a motion. Is it, how big is the screen and what is it made of? Or? Oh, um, the front, is, well, the plan is to have a sort of a closed, closed kind of, not a railing, it's supposed to be an enclosed parapet. Parapet, so it'll be sort of a closed in front, uh, a solid um, wood front as well. And I think we had shown in the drawing um, the privacy screen on the, on the other neighbors as well, into 236. Um, Is there a drawing we can reference? Like which drawing? Uh, there is, sorry, drawing on the elevations show the drawings um, that there is. So which number are you looking at? Um, A4. A4. And A5 as well. So it shows the height. Um, That's only three feet high, right? Uh, three feet, oh, I, well, six inches, yeah. I've got my glasses on, but I can't. Yeah, I can't see it at all. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, three feet, six inches uh, is the height of the railing. And the neighbor, when we spoke to them, they were fine with sort of a closed in because they were worried that it was a glass, uh, glass railing. So this is a, a, a closed in, wooden closed in uh, railing. Actually, my concern was, now which neighbor is, is, is Commenting 236? 232 was commenting, yeah, which is on the south side. Okay, and so my concern it was on the south side, and that drawing was facing back. Is that not correct? My proposal is that you yep. put a screen along the south side of the sure. deck, but it should be, we have a standard, and I don't have it with me. 1.5. 1.5 meters from the bottom of the deck to the top, and it should be translucent or transparent, or translucent, sorry. Okay. Or opaque, opaque. sorry. Um, because I think that clearly is an intrusion into, you know, and I'm not yeah, recommending you put it all the way around the deck because then it'll be horrible to be on the deck. Yeah. Um, but I think that uh, to the south, that's, that's a problem. Okay. So do you have a problem with... No, that's fine. We were planning that it may not be in here, I guess, but yeah, that was certainly the plan because it's the same we're facing okay. on the south side neighbors. Okay, any other concerns, questions? Madam Chairman, if no one else has any questions, I'd like to bring forward a motion of approval subject to a condition requiring um, opaque screening on the south side of the On the third floor deck, uh, the south side of the third floor deck. I think it's third, isn't it? Second floor deck. The yeah. second floor, pardon me. On the second floor deck. Um, 1.5 meters high from the base of the, um, of the deck. And no other conditions. 
Okay, I have a motion to approve, including the condition for the 1.5 meter opaque screening on the south side, second deck by Mr. Paul. Do I have a second? Seconded by Mr. By. All in favor? Uh, applications. Thank you. All right, the next item is 33 item, is, I'm sorry, 55 Young Street. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan and elevations, and a parking consult consultation report. And we need your name, sir. My name is Sanjeev Kumar, uh, representing City Dental. Okay, panel members, do we need a presentation? Sir, my, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think we're going to ask the same question. You go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I guess I guess our question. I'm assuming we have the same question, but my question relates to the parking calculation notes that are in included in the package. Um, is there currently parking on site for this property? Yes, 21 parkings are available under the underground. 21 parking spaces, yes. but then there's some mention of parking spaces at Welling 26 Wellington. They are proposing they are have to looking towards uh, relocating some of the extra parking because the parking is calculated based on the uh, buildings uh, occupied by the details as well as offices as well. So they have thinking about that. But 21 spaces is less than what you require in this building, right? Yes. By building is 12, 12 stories building already built. You need 55, right? Yes, as per whatever they occupied. And uh, so you're already deficient 34 spaces. No, I'm uh, I'm just uh, representing here for uh, ground uh, unit number 100, which is going to be a dental office. So as per that uh, requirement, one parking is needed. And and for me, the confusion is, is the, the I don't have an issue with the one parking space given where it's located. There's plenty of parking around the downtown core in lots. It was the reference to the deficiency in parking of how many spaces? I'm sorry, 21 or 34. 34 thank you. Um, I think that's where the confusion lies. I don't know if it's relevant to this application, but... Is overall parking uh, requirement total building because right. yeah, it's fifty five spaces. Yes, but the site is different. site site just uh, having twenty one right now underground parking. So I, is that a non conforming use or what's I, I don't understand how you can be deficient thirty four spaces because based on the based on the GF eight is calculators right. Um, I'm not sure some of some of the. Uh, offices are vacant or something because they provided us the details and offices based on the calculation as per city by law. We required that number of parking. And they have right now 21 at the site. I'm, I'm a little confused. Okay, thank you. As I thought the, I... Like, so I'm confused as to the relevance of this parking study slash report Be, like to, the, to this actual application. Because you, you say you're speaking on behalf of the dental office and yes. going into the units. That, that is deficient, one spot. One spot, yeah. So I don't, like, I think, I'm not sure we really needed this report because it's kind of making us think you're deficient. Actually, the zoning department asked for the report. How many okay. parkers, determine how many parking needed and something like that and calculate the particular unit parking uh, requirement as well. Right, but we're not here discussing the rest of the Yeah, we're not. We're yeah. here just talking about one spot yes, yes. for a building that's on Young Street. Yeah. Right? But you were asked to provide that study for the building as a whole. Whole building, whole, as a whole. Right, okay. For context. Context purposes, but it confused us, that's all. <laughs> um, so you're looking to transfer the difference between 21 spots and 55 over to Welling. Yeah, that's Definitely. the property manager uh, addressed us in an email. So that 34 spots you were thinking to try and um, put onto the Wellington site. Yeah, yeah. Please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a motion to approve the application um, as you feel it's appropriate and meets the, meets the intent of the bylaws, uh, moved by Mr. Bayat. And, and just Do I have to a clarify, seconder? the variance specifically will say 
that no parking spaces will be provided for the medical dental officer. They're not. That's what I mean. That, that whole thing has nothing yeah. to do with this. Okay, I would second the motion. <laughs> okay, seconded by Mr. Nipfel. All in favor? It's approved, sir. Thank you. Okay. Item number 34, 188 Arlington Avenue. Panel members, we have before us a lot of stuff. Copy of the plan of survey, site plan, and elevations, a covering letter from Gabriel Guiducci, the agent, covering letter from Margaret Mahendarian and Julius Kaufman, the applicants. We have elevations uh, comparable of the subject property to adjacent properties, a list of the proposed variances plus photographs. We have email correspondence from the assistant planner, community planning. We have four form letters in support of um, three addresses on Arlington and 18 <coughs> Graham Gardens. We have concern expressed from number 190, 189, and 183 Arlington. Um, Although looking at this now, it looks like the 183 also supported. So, yes. I'm not sure. And then we have correspondence in opposition again, well, from 183 and 185 and 186 Arlington. Okay, we need your names. Yes, this is uh, Gabriel Guiducci. I'm the agent. All right, panel members, do you need a presentation or? you want to go with questions? Hey, um, no? Okay. Okay, now, uh, so do you have any questions? Um, first of all, thank you very much for this excellent drawing of showing the elevation in context. It doesn't have a number, so I'm, um, I'm at loss as to how to refer to it, that drawing. I can put it up if you wish. Yeah. Uh, can I uh, just give no, you one more letter of support? I'm sorry? One more letter of support? Yeah, sure. Submit this. Okay, this is from 175. It's just after the, all of the it? photographs. Oh, okay. It's the very last page. You want me to put it up? Yeah, please. Yeah, and those are accurate representations of the properties on either side. Yes, they were measured by laser. Can, can I just, I'd like to just take a moment to say why this kind of a drawing is really important. If you only look at the numbers, I would be inclined to not approve this application because mm -hmm. the height is not consistent. But when you look at the drawing of context, you realize that the, the, that's only true in one very small area Correct. because of the way the roofs form. So these kinds of drawings are very helpful in mm -hmm. evaluating the strength of the application. My, my feeling is that any approval, if there is an approval of this, needs to be tied to your front elevation because it's extremely important that you not just build anything according to these bylaws, but that you build what you've got before us. Yes, we're okay with that decision if that leads us to an approval. Uh, given your appreciation of these elevation, would I be able to show you also that, that massing in an horizontal sure. point of view? That, that, that green area, just to keep all the color <laughs> uh, matching. So the oranges are our neighbors uh, and their extent extensions. Uh, the house on the left was uh, built, uh, well, we couldn't actually get a history on it, but it's recently built to full story. The house on the right has a full two-story extension uh, at the back, uh, done in 2005. So that green area, actually, that we, you can see there, that's our three-story part of the house. Uh, the rear extension, which kind of led us to uh, also a building length, is, is a one-story extension. And at the front, we try to maintain a two-story look uh, from a streetscape point of view. 
So the green section is the only part that's angled like that. Correct. Yeah. So in that green space, it's uh, it's about eight feet back from the house on the left, and about six and a half feet back from the house on the left. Uh, and uh, at the front, we're about twelve foot six from our actual what should be considered our front wall. Um, and so I, I I feel it 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 might not even be seen. We're, when we're at the very bottom of the house. Correct. Yes. It's about 12 meter and a half back from our actual front of the house. So it, it staggers back 12 foot and a half, and then we have these sort of triangular um, roof, obviously. Roofs in most cases are triangular. Um, we, we thought, as I think was appreciated by uh, our committee member, um, was that it was the best way to have the least amount of impact in the neighborhood. Uh, we could have done a, maybe a more conventional frame or design roof, I think it would have been a, a more of an impact. Uh, the height in the area is still 11 meters. Uh, this is a wall height. It's only attaching to this sort of component. Uh, we feel that that front scape, front uh, yard, call it streetscape, uh, seem to be respecting what we have on both sides of us. And uh, same with the rear. So it's a bit of a core of the house that extends a little higher than it should. Any other questions, panel members? I have another question. Um, the deck in the rear, a uh, few of the neighbors have commented uh, with concerns about overlooking. Yes. And the deck at the rear is um, more than twice the size that's permitted. Correct. So it's a, it's a really large deck. Can yes. you rationalize why, A, two things. One, um, the size of the back deck. Mm -hmm. um, why it's so why it's so much larger than was mm -hmm. permitted, and two, um, can you suggest some things that you could do to accommodate um, maybe screen to provide some yeah. screen? For of the course, device? yeah. That conversation was actually open with planning department, and the only concern from planning was privacy. Uh, there was no comments on any other parts of the house apart from providing uh, uh, screening on both sides of the deck. The reason why it is larger than what it is allowed, it's only allowed four square meter. Four square meter sometimes is just enough of deck to kind of get out in case of emergency. Uh, for a deck that, uh, in this context that we have in design and lifestyle that we're trying to create out of these house, it's more of a sort of a step out deck where you can get a little more than just being safe. Uh, and that is why the planning department has requested us to put fencing on it. Um, well, private, privacy fence on both sides. At the same time, as you can tell from the drawings, same, same drawing there, you can see how far back the balcony extends, uh, which in sort of on the left side, we don't even go further than their back wall. So we're kind of like tacked in between the neighbor's walls with that, with that deck. Do you have screen fencing on the deck on the drawing? Uh, yes, they were resubmitted to the committee with that change due to planning. Uh, was, uh, there was a resubmission of drawings, but I think I... Do you remember when you said Well, there is a combination. So on the floor plans, it shows, which is page 85. That shows the plan itself. Uh, and then we have page. When did he fall? Yeah, that would be page A9. That's the north elevation. And page A10, uh, which is the rear elevation. What date are your plans? Ours look like uh, 2019, right? These are oh, 1206. But that date might have not been changed. If you look at the, uh, they're, they're this, the, these things here. Right? Yeah, and, and it's right, right there as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we have. Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> I can leave you this. Five feet, 11 inches high. Yeah. Part of it's a screen and part of it's behind the roof. <laughs> You are adjacent? Oh, yeah? Yeah, as a pastor. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh. You're 118? Oh. Yes, yes. He was in support. I'm sorry? Oh, you're in he support. Was in support. You're still in support of the application? You're still in support of the application? Yeah, you're still in support? Uh, I go now and... Um one Okay, sir, sir, just a second. Are you a neighbor? Yeah, at the back. Okay, are you opposing this? Did you want to did you want to speak? Okay, can you grab a seat here for a second then? Okay, can we just clear up this screening first so it's A9 is the what what are you? A10 11 Okay, so A8 all the elevations yeah, and those drawings were approved by planning department. Okay. So do you mind if we just listen to the neighbor? No, of course. And then we'll come back to you? Yeah. Okay. So can you stand up to the podium and please give us your name and your address? Uh, go to the podium. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah. where he just came from. All right, so I need your name and your address. My name is Fitz Solomon, F-I-T-Z. Yep. First name, S-A-L-M-O-N, last name. Okay, and your address? 18 Graham Gardens. Okay. Can you... All right, so can you just briefly tell us why you're here? Well, I get a letter from the city to come here. I got a letter from the city. Right. To come here. Okay. Well, you don't have to come. They're advising you. But so we would like to know what your concerns are about what they're proposing. My property is at the back, right? Okay. And I'm low. Yep. I'm low. So if I, the other house, they put in a garage at the front. And all the water is coming to me. Okay. That's 186. So I would uh, please if this gentleman going to do the same, if he could put some of his water towards the, the, his lawn at the front or to the street for me, because I have a lot of problem with all that water being my property is low. I'm not objecting to the building to whatever, but I'm only because I don't know what type of garage he's going to put at the front. 19, the other address beside them. Right. That's um, 186. Okay. They put a garage at the front of their house. Now they can't put no water on the, their front lawn. So all their water is coming on my property at the back. I even have a case with the city pertaining to that property. Okay. So I'm not objecting anything. I'm just suggesting, you know, ma'am. If they put it, the garage at the front, yep. where they drive, they won't have nowhere to put their water to the street. Well, so all water will come on my property. So okay. just a couple of things. They will be required to do a grading plan that needs approval at the city level. And we could put a condition in for permeable pavers for the driveway. That's if we, if yes, we approve it. Because before, right? All these houses were made, and the water went down in the, in the ground and go to wherever. Right. The city gave permission to those people to take out downsprout. Right. Now, my property, where I, I live at 180... Um, Graham Garden, you said? Yes, ma'am. I live at Graham Garden, but the house at 168... One, no, one, 186, that house. I don't know if that guy get permit from the city or what, because they just do what, what there, you know? I well, don't they're know. always supposed to have a grading plan, but 
Yes, ma'am. I only say if they if if you're gonna put the garage that drives this way, sure. to go at the front underneath there, all the water has to come on my property because they don't have nowhere at the front to put it. Okay, so that's all. Is, so that's your only concern. Yes, ma'am. So can I ask you to grab a seat, and then I'm gonna ask the applicant to see how he can. Right, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. That's that's the water degrading. Okay, understood. So one of the questions my colleagues yes. said, is there a grade change between uh, you and the gentleman? And can you do, mine is, can you mm -hmm. do permeable pavers? And what else can you do to mitigate? So we would probably be okay with a permeable pavers at the front, if that would help. Um, I think there's maybe other way that we can also do as far as controlling uh, water uh, coming down from our structure, right. uh, as far as downspouts location and whatnot. Um, and we might have to investigate on a way not to get the water where it naturally slopes, because uh, there is a bit of a natural slope in this neighborhood. Uh, so we will be obviously needed to provide a grading plan. Um, and we're going to have to investigate a little further what can be done in order not to make the issue greater than what it might be. Arlington's it's higher than Graham. I'm sorry. For Arlington's the yeah. So Graham if you Graham's. look at the uh, side elevation, it actually shows you a little bit of how that slopes kind of go down. I think it's about a three percent slope towards the back. As I understood the gentleman's comments, he was concerned in part that you have a reverse slope driveway. No, not at all. Believe, no. So I don't believe, well, but I I don't think he understands that you no. don't have a reverse slope I driveway. I think he's and no. I think that um, the the. The grading plan you <coughs> will have, if you don't already, I would take to. most of the the water out to the street, would it not? Yeah, at least like probably three quarter, I'd say a quarter to a third of the property natural Those draining water will water be water going water towards water the front. Right to the front. Right. Uh, and then I, I think the downspouts will be the most important component of focusing and making sure that they might drain towards the front rather than the back or at least on a part of the property where grading naturally slopes towards the front. Uh, but the rest is all natural land and natural profile that we can probably control to a certain Well, we certainly extend. can. Most, right. But if you can in good faith. We would do our best in good faith. Um, good. There's a way to investigate possibly like a French drain, but I'm going to have to investigate with the city if it's even a possibility of proposing so. Well, if, if you're willing to yes. maybe. And maybe let the gentleman know what's going on. Yep. Give him a sense of comfort. That would help. For sure. Okay. So, panel members, do we have any other questions? No. All righty. We'll take it into committee. Any comments? Or a motion? No, I'm prepared to bring a motion. Um, I think your presentation was, and your elevations and drawings were extremely helpful. As my colleague pointed out, the uh, drawing showing the height in context with neighboring properties, um, the fact that um, the height is stepped back from the front and the rear, I think helps mitigate any impact on neighboring properties. Um, on paper, you don't see that when you're looking straight at the variances, but they are shown on the elevations. And so uh, given that, um, you have stepped back the height. Uh, the height only relates to one side of the peak. Um, there is a peaked roof. So um, I feel that this is uh, fits within the context of the neighborhood. Uh, it reduces the massing that otherwise would be if it was a straight box. Um, so I'm happy to bring forward a motion for approval. I'd like it to tie it to plans to... Um, to, to uh, the elevation yes, drawings? Yes, to the elevation drawings, just to ensure that the, it's not built um, full right. height on all sides. Um, so I, I was thinking A8, 9, 10, and 11. Does that show all the, I believe? No, could could I the suggest that you also put A1 and A2 because that's, that shows the extent of the third story and A1 shows the front elevation. Sure. And in terms of the privacy screening, is that captured in those drawings with the height? Because I can't read the height. That's what I thought. But is the height on 10 there? 10 and 11. Do the standard wording where it's 1.5 on each okay. side and then it's covered okay. just I'm happy with just that. for the rear deck? Yes. Yes, yeah. So, so you want the elevation? This is the same as, except it's not dimensioned, it's just 38. 
Yeah. Do you need A1? A1 doesn't really show anything. Different. I thought A8 so, captured it, but I don't, yeah. I'm happy to be flexible. A2 through A1. No, A8, 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 9, and 10? And 11, because it's just. So A, oh, A1 sure. and 2, so 8, the 9. Site plan and just the elevation. Yeah. And then the screening condition. Have we lost you completely? Oh. <laughs> I'm with you. So with you. <laughs> okay, so I have a motion to approve the application. Uh, tying it to all the drawings mentioned. Yes. And uh, yeah, and I have a second. That's moved by Ms. Valen. And the screening. And the screening of 1.5 yeah. meters. South edge. Yeah. South. South and north edge. Okay, moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipple. All in favor? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you maybe just take your neighbor outside and fill him in as to what happened? Because I'm not sure. Okay. So item number 35, 102 Robina Avenue. Panel members, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and we have a 3D rendering of the proposed subject property. And we need your name. I'm Kyle Kadra, the agent. All right. Panel members, do you need a presentation? Or can we go to questions? I need a... I don't have a presentation. I have a okay. Sorry, um, can you tell me, are there already three suites in the house, or is there just the uh, illegal basement suite and the rest of the house? Are there already three existing suites in the house? Yes. Am <laughs> um, I understanding the floor plans correct in order to get into the basement suite? Uh, in the basement? Yeah. <laughs> Talking about existing plan, right? Or it proposed? Um, I think you're, yeah, you're referring to the proposed, I think, yeah. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. There, there is there is one entrance that goes through the storage area and the bedroom, and that's the only way in. Oh no, there's a, a second access through the stairs. Yeah. Um, I think so, but I'm just going to confirm that. Yes, it is existing. Yeah. Yeah. If I may speak, Madam Chair, uh, we also submitted uh, support signatures, over 16 signatures, but I was not able to find them on the portal. Uh, I, I have nothing. Yeah. We do have support from the two adjacent neighbors and a total of 16 signatures. Do you have it? Um, not right now. We sent it to Patricia uh, a few times, but I haven't heard. Uh, it's, it's, it's been sent to her over uh, 10 days ago. I don't know if she's here. Second. Yeah. Okay, well, we don't have it, so, and you don't have it. No problem. I can email it anyhow, but it was emailed. Yeah. Okay, so both adjacent neighbors, you say, are in support? Yep. I'll email it again, again, uh, just now, if that's okay. Well, we're just taking your word for it. I appreciate it. Thanks. And both entrances to the basement are... That correct? That's correct, sir. Yeah. Um, in terms of building code, yes, you do need both. Yeah.
That is correct. Like uh, my client purchased the property in this condition and he wanted to legalize it and do some uh, renovation work. So these are the variances that came up through zoning review. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, there's already three suites. Yeah. I mean, there's three units. Yeah. So now it's going to be a main and two accessory dwellings in total. Any other questions? All right, let's take it into committee. Any comments? To move a motion then? Okay, but go ahead, you. I'll second the motion. I'm going to second the motion. Um, I, you know, often when you see variances requiring more than one secondary suite, sometimes they're undersized, that type of thing, parking variances, I don't see any of that, so I don't think there'll be any sort of negative impact on neighbors in terms of parking. It seems, sounds like it's already existing, functioning without any complaints from neighbors. So I'm happy to uh, second the motion. I do think it's the four tests. A motion to move to Hyatt, seconded by Ms. Valentini. All in favor? Okay. Thank you so much. Item number 36, 29 Queensdale Avenue. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. Email correspondence from the Acting Coordinator Permits and Enforcement Parking. And we have a Report from planning that's um, asking for some conditions. Can I have your name, please? My name is Deborah Mesher. I'm the agent and designer of this proposal. Are you aware of the planning report? Yes, yeah, I spoke with uh, Kasia. Yes, and I agree with it. Okay. Um, do we need a presentation, panel members? Would you like to go to questions? No? Okay. Anybody have any questions? You also have screening of. Yeah, it's like a wood slat fence. So on the drawings, it's only three foot six, but we're, we'll comply with the, the higher, the five foot version, the 1.5 meters. <laughs> yeah, 1.5 meters. <laughs> five feet, five feet. <laughs> and I, I, several of these variants are existing conditions. Yes, that's right. Okay, any other questions? No? All right, we'll take it into committee then. Any discussion, Plenty comments? Yes. Um, yes, it is. Yeah. 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 Opaque or vegetative that covers it. It's question number two. Yeah. I thought it was, but okay. I'm happy to bring forward a motion for approval. Um, it's going to be subject to, and you, you've indicated you have no concerns with the planning recommendation for their condition, subject to the con two, two conditions. Set out in the planning department memo related to the front yard setback being limited to the proposed porch enclosure, provided that it be constructed substantially in accordance with plans. And the second one is for the opaque or vegetated privacy screening along east and west sides of the second story deck. Um, I think, as we've heard, some of these variances are existing, and um, I feel the rest of them uh, are compatible uh, with the surrounding neighborhood and meet the four tests. Okay, I have a motion to approve, including the thirty first planning report moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Niffel. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you very much. Okay, item number 37, 8 Rush Home Park Crescent. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, and we had opposition correspondence from number 3, Rush Home. Can I have your name, please? Good afternoon, Madam Chair. My name is Adam Brander, and uh, my address is 49 Bolton Avenue. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation? Or 
you like to go direct? I don't need a presentation, but I have questions. Can you speak to the parking? I think there was a concern expressed by a neighbor about parking in the area. You're asking for parking variance. You require two spaces, none will be provided. Can you speak to availability of parking in the neighborhood? Uh, yeah, I guess um, I can speak more generally, but uh, as a first kind of point of reference, we contacted Toronto Parking, Street Parking this morning, and there's 57 parking spaces available with for permanent parking on the street in the area. Um, so they're available. They have correct. We have a letter from parking if you'd like to review it. They trust you. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I would generally talking about parking with, um, this is a provision that's been duplicated in the, the former bylaw and is, is in the current citywide bylaw. So it kind of stretches across all areas of the Amalgamated Toronto. Um, when we take a look at the immediate and surrounding context, um, we kind of read a different story. I can show a overhead um, of that condition. Is this you're showing us? This is a diagram of the immediate context, uh, and it, it kind of is my lead into how it, it relates to even if parking is, um, although it's a requirement um, by minor variance, if it um, really has weight in the immediate area. So we have references in this area for up to 40 dwelling units with zero parking that's been approved by committee. Um, we have another example on the same street um, for th where three parking spaces were required and zero were approved. Um, but generally, just looking at this, we look at, at walk score and, and ride score, and it kind of generally supports a area that can be served locally by amenities and with connectivity to the city by local transit. Um, so in an ideal scenario, supporting the, uh, the planning principles of uh, good city planning. Ideally, we don't need a car, um, but if the one additional resident in this area were to require a car, we kind of checked into the available parking permits for street parking. Questions? Comments. Convincing, basically, I mean, he's not inventing that can't get some of it in the air. Basically, our people live in this park. That being the case, like my being something. understand uh, your concerns um, in, in addition to the uh, neighbor in opposition we have seven letters of support from other neighbors in the area um, that that deem the the requested variances in relation to um, the proposal as as reasonable and appropriate for the area um, my understanding is that um, city of Toronto is looking to fill those parking permits um, and they have them available, so... Uh, what does that mean available? That means there's parking, maybe not on this street, but they could park in other streets within the vicinity? Yeah, there's a small... It's overnight parking. A small local catchment for overnight parking where there's 57 vacancies as of, as of today. Do you know, do you know what the radius is for that? I'm just... It's approximately um, the immediate block, as I understand, which is bounded by the major streets the city block approximately so basically this is for overnight parking plus being able to stay and exceed the three-hour bylaw during the day so people who have permits and those people that are coming from why 
can are working under the three-hour bylaw during the day. I, I assume that's the yeah, complaint that could be voiced more to a counselor during the day for local parking requirements. But it's uh, it not is fair to legitimate oh, permits with some control. Uh, hang on. I don't know. Do we have any other questions? The, uh, Mr. Krangle, who's raised some objections, some uh, two of them. One is to do with parking. The other is the idea of um, having multiple units structure would somehow get wise neighborhood quite of that approach to providing the challenge I suppose and he sees the possibility of this becoming short term the rentals. Unfortunately in the city this is a little bit beyond the control of the city at this but I major issue and as my colleague has mentioned part of the problem with the YMCA it's beyond our control or the control of the <laughs> welcome, welcome. <laughs> it will it will shut on its own yeah you broke it are there any other multiple unit um, homes on the street yep um there's an application at 22 Rush Elm Park that we have reference to that has three units and zero parking on the street. That's an application. Um, a past approved application, yes. Can you just tell me, I'm just trying to look at a context map. Where is the Y? I, I don't know exactly. Is it, is that Dover Court and College? Oh, it's right on College, okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Are you, Madam Chair, I'd agree with um, the committee members' comments that uh, the parking for the Y is beyond the, um, the reach of um, decisions made in this committee. Um, Any other questions? Bring a motion forward. I don't okay. know what my colleagues are going to think about it, but in any event, um, You've presented evidence that uh, there are 57 parking spaces available, permit parking in the area. Um, I live in an area that has permit parking. Just because you have permit parking doesn't mean you're guaranteed a spot in front of your house. So you may have to drive around to find a space. And that's what happens when we live in the city. Um, I think adding an extra unit is valuable for rental, inc uh, rental um, the rental base. Um, and so in my view, given that you've shown the location, it's very walkable, there's access to transit, and there are um, spaces available for parking. Currently, I'm prepared to bring a motion forward for approval of the application, notwithstanding the request for the variance. So I'm approving all of it, but I think you've satisfied my concern about the parking issue. Okay. All right, motion to approve. Moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Ms. Baia. All in favor? Applications. Are you dissenting? Thank you. Okay. Item number 38, 962 St. Clarence Avenue. Okay. We have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. And can I have your name, please? Mario Silva, good afternoon. Hi. Panel members, do you need a presentation? No. Do you have any questions? No. No? Okay. I'd like to move a motion. 
Right. You, I think it's a very straightforward sure? application. <laughs> I think it's a very straightforward application. The variances are reasonable. Um, the proposal is fits into the context of the community, and the request clearly meets the four tests for variance. So I move approval. All right. Without condition. Uh, okay. I have a motion to approve, moved by Mr. Seconded by Ms. Larson. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, item number 39, 516 Markham Street. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of surveys, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, a previous committee decision that affects this property, a T-Lab decision and order that affects this property, correspondence in support from Tristan and Tara Armstrong 518, so the adjacent neighbor, and correspondence in opposition from 499 Palmerston Boulevard. Okay, we need your name again. Jonathan Benskowski, good afternoon. Um, just a, uh, maybe a brief history if, if you kind of want to go. Um, I was before you, I would say probably in the spring uh, for, for this property for a completely different built form um, that, that in the opinion of the committee was completely out of character with the neighborhood. Uh, so we did go back. We, we did file a T-Lab appeal just really as a precaution in case we couldn't work with the neighbors to come to an agreement with some changes. So we did come to an agreement with, with both adjacent neighbors. You do have a, a letter of support from the individual to the north. We have um, removed the T-Lab appeal. So that is, was basically a decision of just uh, removing the actual appeal. So basically the changes from the application that were originally here uh, to what it, from the spring to where we are today is the elimination entirely of, of what would have been variance number three, which just dealt with a window within the 17 meter length on the third floor facing the north. That, that has now been removed, so that is not a request that is before you today. The other change is a slight reduction in the FSI from the 0.83 that I was here for previously uh, to the 0.81 that we are at today. And then lastly, the, the biggest change would be the actual built form of the dwelling, which now mimics the adjacent houses and the looks along this side of Markham itself. We have a, a traditional shed dormer at the front with a covered porch, basically in keeping with what is to the north and the south. Um, the, only, the only note here is this is one of only two detached dwellings along this portion of Markham Road. But um, we do have support from the individual to the north uh, who is now okay with the built form. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Two questions. So what was the built form like before? I, I didn't have Do we want to go there? Would you like me to show? It was really bad. <laughs> was it? Oh, you remember it, was it then? really bad. Okay. I can show you if you like. No. He went away with his tail between his legs. <laughs> it was. I'm assuming this is a huge, a big improvement? It was. Since yes, I didn't have is. the benefit. I, I, I don't think it was a bad design. I just don't know if it was the Long best time. design for here. Yeah. But it was a very interesting way of trying to bring light into a house the, the designer did, but it just maybe didn't work here. But I, I do have it if you'd like to see it. <laughs> well, now I'm curious. Okay. <laughs> now, now I can't say no, I need to see the design, yeah. but I'm just curious no, in terms of built form. Design. I, okay. It just didn't work here. There's other context. Okay. <laughs> You'll see the con. So what, what he had was very large, this was the third floor. Okay. Uh, window. I got it. Okay. Enough said. Se second question yeah. is, I understand looking at the numbers, you're going down in FSI, it was point, it's point one eight one and it was point eight three. But when I look at the actual meter square, there's a... I, I don't know how that is. You know that the numbers Correct. are completely... Correct. I, 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 I actually scratched it out here because it made no sense to me. It went from to 307 to 311, but yeah. I'm not sure. Um, so you can pick one you'd like to approve it to, and I'd be happy with it if you want to pick the percentage. The difference, I'm not going to be calculating. Or the number, it's up to you. The, through you, Madam Chair, the original the application that was refused was based on a zoning review. This one's on a zoning waiver. And my understanding from the zoning examiner is that the they could never seem to agree on what the lot area actually was to calculate the FSI. So um, I believe that previously the lot area was considered to be 368.59 square meters but now we're being told it's 384.35 square meters so that's where the 
There's some wow. discrepancy in how the lot area is being calculated, but I'm looking at the survey and it's pretty. It's an interesting lot. survey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you can pick what you'd like, the percentage or the number, if you deem this worthy of approval. Yeah. yeah. Speaks to floor space index, which is the 0.81. The extra is just to give you an idea of how big 0.81 is on a lot, because in some instances you might have 0.81, but it might be just a 1,500 square foot home, depending on the size of the lot. Building for the permis purposes of a permit looks at 0.81. I'll look at the number. Well, for the purposes of the zoning bylaw, there is a section that speaks specifically to floor space index. It doesn't speak to gross floor area. We throw in that extra number to give you an idea of what that actually is. Well, 0.81 is 0.81, but if yeah, it's no, if it doesn't if it's less than 311 square meters, they, have a, they may have a problem. They won't. They'll have to downsize the house a bit. And then if it's actually larger, then um, in my experience in the past, it is uh, as as the deputy secretary treasurer stated, it does go by the actual 0.81 number because the, the zoning bylaw regulates it based upon that. It, it, look, if, if I mean, in the end, if, we, if it would be a difference of three to four square meters, um, I'm sure we would, we would make it work if, type thing. So if you use the previous floor or lot area of 368.59, the GFA at 0.81 would be 298.55 instead of 311.45. Then again, this is on a waiver, so the applicant is. Yeah, I'm I'm comfortable with the 0.81, and if we have to play with it from there, we would we could play with it from there. This 0.83 was 307.4, which anyway. Again, it's based on a waiver, so if issues that based, there's a need to come back. It's the onus is on the app or the applicant will have to deal with that. Oh, it's on a waiver? Yep. Any other questions? Madam Chairman, if no one has any questions, I'd love you to bring forward. <laughs> 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 Thank um, you. An approval uh, motion. Um, this is a substantially improved um, application to what we had before. As the applicant indicated, there's nothing necessarily wrong with what was here before. Just in this particular location, it generated a great deal of opposition, and rightly so. So um, my motion is without condition. Yes, and I hope we get one is the right number. Okay, do I have a second or else? Okay, motion to approve, moved by Mr. Nipfel, second by Ms. Larson. All in favor, your application is approved. Thank you. Okay, item number 4078, Gormley Avenue. Okay, we have before us a copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations, as well as a decision, previous decision that affects the property. Can I have your name, please? My name is Yusra Siddiqui. I'm the property owner. Okay. Panel members, do you need a presentation? This is very strange. No, he's still here, but he's just in support. Okay. Does he want to speak or not? Unless you had questions that we would need his input on. Okay. What, what's his address and name? We'll just put it in the record that he was here. Do you want to... Where are you? Back there? Okay. Can you just come and identify yourself? We'll just put you in the record, um, your name and address. 
Maybe just grab a seat right here. Oh, okay. You have to do it at the mic, so you're on YouTube. I'm the neighbor directly in front of uh, the subject property. My name is Vito Siraco from 73A Gormley. I've seen the, the plans, and um, I'm in support of them. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. I have a question. Um, you don't have a drawing of this particular house attached to the semi to show what it looks like? No, it's identical. It's actually identical, but without the third floor. Okay, so if you could go to drawing A5, the only difference is that slight, well, the additional pitched roof on the top, the part that says new roof to match. That's right. That's the only difference. Otherwise... From the front, it'll look identical. Well, but I'm enclosing the balcony area. Pardon me? I'm enclosing the balcony. There's an open balcony that's being enclosed. That's not part of um, the variation request. The variation was about just the, the square footage. We didn't... I'm not clear about what you mean if you're enclosing exist, the balcony. An existing balcony. She's At the front. It. I don't see that on my draw. No, I still don't see it. Above the garage, right now, the balcony is open. We're simply closing it in. So if you look at drawing, Sorry, the, um, it is, I don't know what the number is on the page, but it looks like this. A2. <laughs> You've got an, a living room addition over the garage, right? It's, right, it, currently it's a balcony. We're just enclosing it in glass and adding, like, closed it. Right now it's used as an outdoor breakfast nook. And it's going to be used as a living room. Yes. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to keep it up? And the attached house is, is that here. Exactly. Right? Yeah. The front is all identical. So in terms of the new roof you're constructing, I'm just looking at drawing A7. Um, well, the pitch of the new roof then looks like it's going to match the existing slope. Exactly. So it's not like you're building a box, boom, right on top. No. You're going to set it back. From the exactly. So fr from the very front, it's not even going to be that visible. It's really just from the back of the house that it's going to be visible. And my neighbors are fully supportive. I was going to ask that. Do we have anything in writing from your neighbor? Uh, no. I, I mean, I have emails. We're now good friends. But they have absolutely no issue whatsoever. I don't see any letters of, of opposition, but yeah. I just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Any other questions? I'm ready for a motion if anybody else. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No. Um, I would like to bring a motion forward for approval of the application. Um, I think the fact that uh, the third floor addition, um, the slope of the roof, you're going to be maintaining the slope. I think that's more sensitive than just plopping a third floor right on top um, next to a, a semi with a slope roof. So I feel that would fit in better with what currently exists in terms of the attached neighbor. I don't think the floor space index is out of um, whack with what's going on in the neighborhood. So my motion is for approval of the application. In fact, you are closing it. helps make the two halves of compatible and as you've indicated because it's far back you may not even see it. Normally I would one I mean and not in another but I think you Okay have a motion to approve moved by Ms. Valentini, seconded by Mr. Nipfo. All in favor? Your applications approved. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to vet the 3.30 time slot, and then we'll take uh, five minutes or so. Okay, so the next item is 41 A, B, and C, 52 Holmesdale Road. Is the applicant here? Is there anybody here in interest? You're opposing, sir? 
Okay, can you folks go outside the room and have a discussion to see if you can resolve any, any differences? Item number 42, uh, 143 to 177 Lakeshore Boulevard East. Is there anybody here in interest? Okay, item number 43, A, B, and C, 647 Barris Ford Avenue. Is there anyone in interest? Yes, you're opposing? Okay, can you, this is the applicant here, can you also go have a conversation, please? Okay, so we'll come back around 10 to 4. Can you come forward? Sorry, I can't hear you. Are we vetting? It's not four o'clock yet. Oh. Yeah. On, oh, on the agenda. The agenda that I've got says three thirty slot, but okay.
Okay. Is um, the applicant here for 143 to 177 Lakeshore? You ready to go? Okay, item number 42. 143 to 177 Lakeshore Boulevard East and 26 Richardson Street. We have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of plan of survey, ground floor plan and elevations, a covering letter from Sarah Miller, the agent, and we have a decision, previous decisions that affect the property, email correspondence from the planner of the TRCA, and a staff report from the manager of development engineering. So can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Sarah Miller. I work for the Daniels Corporation, and I'm the applicant on the file. Okay, panel members, I know we've got like five pages plus of right. Now, um, <laughs> do, you, do you have a colored board or anything? Just something you can show I'd, us like in a really brief... Uh, sure. I think we're pretty clear on it, but I know okay. some questions. Of just showing us what the four parts are. Yeah, no problem. I'll um I'll put it up on the projector here. These these strata reference plans are always fun, right? I know. I know. That's why. Simple, simple, simple. Yeah, I and I'm joined by my uh, our surveyor from Kirschmar. If if the questions get really complicated, um, but basically what we're doing here, um, the overall development plan is for two residential towers on a shared podium. Uh, there are four individual components being created. One is a retail component, which represents the retail at grade of the building. The second is a commercial component, which has its entrance, obviously, at grade, um, and then takes up the second floor of the podium space. And then we have two distinct residential condominiums, one known as the Residential West Tower, which is a 45-story tower, and the other known as the Residential East Tower, which is a 36-story tower. Um, so overall, the development plan is for 963 residential units in total. Um, that one floor of commercial space, and then um, 10 retail commercial units at grade. And, and these are all supported by uh, four levels of underground parking. Okay. Now, panel members, do, do we need any? Good? <laughs> Clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, trying to figure, I made the mistake of trying to figure out the stratification of yeah, he I was going through each up. one. Oh, I mean, yeah. he's very creative. <laughs> I applaud. <laughs> I applaud your effort. That's the ground floor, isn't it? Yeah, sorry. So this is, this is the ground floor. And um, yeah, just to give you a sense. So if uh, the yellow components, yeah, the yellow is, our, is the commercial retail. Um, so, so you can see there we've got retail units all along the south side of the building um, and, and also that, that space at grade which is shown I think as part 12 um, and part 13 right at the bottom of the plan there. That's actually an open area what, what we're calling the yard. That's an outdoor amenity space but it will be owned by the retail component of the building. Uh, the green you see is the west tower, the west residential tower. Um, its entrance is off Lower Jarvis, and uh, it will also be it, it will also be the owner of the garage ramp, which you can see accessing the access to that is off Richardson. Uh, the sort of orange peachy color is the residential east tower. Um, its main lobby entrance is off of Richardson, and its predominant frontage is at at um, that northeast corner at Lakeshore and Richardson. And then the final piece is the commercial component. And those are, uh, uh, this is the at grade plan. So you can see the main entrance is from the yard space, that pink area. Um, then you take some escalators up to the second floor and the second floor plan, which I can show you.
The second floor is, is all commercial space um, with stairwells and elevator shafts maintained uh, in the residential condo ownership. Owned by one residential condominium item. It's done. It's related to commercial. No, it's all it's all residential and it's and it's split. So uh, the drive aisles are all owned by the East Tower, which is the larger of the two commercial condos, or sorry, residential condos. Yep, and and the two upper levels of parking are owned by the East Tower, which is the smaller of the two, and the bottom two levels are owned by the West Tower. You're welcome. And you're aware of the engineering map? Now we are. Okay with those conditions? And we're okay with those conditions. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. All right. So um, we're in committee. If there are no questions. I need a, a motion. Uh, based on that, I'd like to bring a motion forward for approval of the application. Thank you for the brief overview presentation. That was very helpful. Um, I feel this meets the, the uh, requirements of the requirements for consent, and I'd like to make them subject to the conditions set out in the development in engineering uh, memo and standards consent provisions as always. Okay, I have a motion moved by Ms. Valentini to approve the application, including the September 24th engineering conditions, and seconded by Ms. Nipple. All in favor? Your application is approved. Thank you. Okay, now is the uh, applicant for 379 Ellis Park Road here? I think they're outside. They're outside? Are you opposing? Uh, Okay, do you want to speak? Okay, so then we'll just hold it till the end. Okay? Because it's the last one on the agenda, and if you want to speak, then we'll just. Okay, item, how about 52 Holmesdale Road? Are they here? Where's your opposition? Uh huh. So oh, he's gone? Good afternoon. My name is Ravi Patel. Hang on one second. Buy some. Yeah, why don't... Sure. Can we wait? Because I, I don't want to, you know, do something then reopen and we have to start all over again. So, sorry about that. But how about 647 Beresford? Are they still outside too? Okay. Well, I guess we're... Uh, we can do Ellis Park, but but he's out there somewhere too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so he is still here. Great. So are you? Are is he ready to go? So you say they? Are there more people objecting, or? Uh, there is a I see. I mean, if they're still discussing, then, yeah? Yes, it was. I sat on that. I was on that. Okay. Okay, are all these people who just walked in, are you for Ellis Park? They are. I'm, I'm, I am Yeah, but you're here for Ellis Park. Yes. Okay. All right, let's deal with uh, Ellis Park now. Opposition on the side, right here, in the front row. Okay. Um, okay, just bear with me a second. Okay, panel members, we have before us a copy of the minutes from the June 26th public hearing, as well as the materials that were submitted at that time, copy of the plan of survey, revised site plan, floor plans, and elevations, email correspondence from Ravine and Natural Feature Protection, correspondence in opposition from 383 Ellis Park Road, 
We have an arborist report from Bruce Tree X Company Limited and 12 photographs of trees on neighboring properties. So can I have your name, please? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dylan Dewsbury. I'm from Design Plan Services and here on behalf of the owner, um, who is also here today. Okay. Um, so you have five minutes to do a um, presentation. Uh, so I just want to quickly go over the history of the application uh, before I get into the variances. When the application was first heard in June, um, there were no objections from city staff or the TRCA. Um, and the application was presented and the committee made the decision to approve the minor variances. It was only after that motion that the committee was made aware of um, there were neighbours uh, present that intended to speak, uh, so we deferred the application in order to speak to the neighbours. Um, the neighbours were from 383 Ellis Park Road, which is the condo building next door. So discussions have taken place with the neighbours since that application was deferred, and as a result, the overall height has been reduced from 10.08 metres to 9.63 metres, and the side main wall height was reduced from 8.39 metres to 7.93 metres. Uh, the third, fl uh, third floor balcony has been reduced, and a portion of the roof was removed over that balcony. A primary concern of the neighbours was the preservation of trees along the northern lot boundary. Um, an agreement has been reached between the owner and the neighbours regarding the engagement of an arborist to ensure that all efforts are made to protect these trees during the construction. Um, and a tree permit will also be required and RNFP also regulates this land. Um, so the protection of the trees will be uh, ensured to the best of our ability. Um, a representative of the neighbours is also here today, and it is my understanding they're no longer here in opposition, um, from the condo side at least. Um, and based on the owner's agreement to protect the trees located at the lot boundary. The applicant is requesting minor variances relating to the construction of a replacement dwelling on this lot. The replacement dwelling will utilise almost the same footprint as the existing building and the building footprint and GFA are very similar and the height is now lower than the existing uh, building that's there. So the variances requested are due to the unique nature of this lot and the grading. Uh, the current house on the lot is very run down and has been con condemned after being left abandoned for 14 years, so it's in very poor structural condition. Uh, this is very unique lot due to the grading and therefore it posed a pretty daunting task to the potential owners looking to rebuild it. Um, so the first step was to speak with TRCA and ensure that re the replacement dwelling meets all their policies, which is why it's mostly on the existing footprint. Um, with small modifications, mostly shifting the floor area towards the street. So the, although it appears as though there are a lot of variances, uh, they're mostly a result of the grading and mostly reflect the conditions of the existing building that's on the lot. Although there isn't um, time to go through all the variances in a lot of detail, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, um, but I can go through some of them in groups. So the variances relating to overall height, um, main wall heights and the height of the first floor, uh, are mostly due to the grading. So the established grade is almost two metres below the street level, resulting in those variances. The proposed dwelling will, no, will be no higher than the dwelling currently on the lot, and the overall heights and also main wall heights have been reduced, as I mentioned before. Uh, variance three is regarding the FSI, which is a result of um, the TRCA determining the stable top of bank. Um, as a result of this, the, the technical lot area, as referred to by the TSA, is only 3.46 square metres, which is the um, reason behind that variance. So if the entire lot was used in the calculation of FSI, it would actually comply. Uh, I also want to note that the floor area is slightly less than the existing dwelling. So there are also... Can you just repeat that about the... I understand that, the calculation, and it looks huge, but you were saying um, if the whole lot was used, what would, what would it be? I haven't got the exact figure oh, with me, but, but it, it would be lower than the 0.35. Uh, yes, it would comply. According it would to comply. That's yeah. what you said. I'm sorry. I missed sorry. that part, and I didn't know what you said. So oh, it would sorry. comply. Thank you. Uh, so there's also variances mentioned for front and rear yard soft landscaping. As the dwelling is built over the existing building footprint, the soft landscaping on the lot will be approximately the same as currently exists. 
In fact, the rear yard soft landscaping will be increased as the rear main wall will be closer to the uh, street side. In addition, uh, the purpose of the soft landscaping is to ensure sufficient area for stormwater infiltration, uh, sufficient outdoor amenity area, and to allow a growing environment for trees. In all these aspects, the proposed dwelling will not be any different to what currently exists, um, and it will also be subject to the approval of RNFP and TRCA. Okay, you're over five minutes, so I'll give you a little bit more time, because uh, another minute. Sure. Um, so I'll just quickly summarise the rest of them by saying that um, most of the other variances are just due to the existing conditions. They're the same as what's there currently. Um, in regards to the balcony and privacy issues, um, I'd just like to note that there's also uh, five storeys of condo buildings that are right next to this. Um, there's also significant tree coverage in the rear yard. So having been to the property myself, standing on that balcony that's there at the moment, uh, you cannot see much through the trees at all. Um, so also the proposal has been reviewed by TRCA, um, as I mentioned earlier, and Urban Forestry, and they've all stated they have no objection subject to the various conditions that the owner's willing to comply with. Um, additionally, the neighbours spoke, uh, we've spoken to the neighbours to the south who, are, um, who came in support at the first meeting, and there's seven support letters on file. So in conclusion, we believe that the proposal maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan. Uh, the variances in context are minor in nature and appropriate for the development of the land uh, to replace the condemned building. And I'd be happy to answer any more questions you may have. Just before I move on to the opposition, um, the uh, planning report from June 21st. Yes. We, uh, we would probably, if we do approve it, we would be inclined to attach that. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's... Um, the owner's okay with that. Okay. All right, panel members, any questions before we go to the opposition? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll have you back in a minute. Sure. Well, more than a minute. But we'll back. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so who would like to speak first then? Well, I'll need your name and address. My name is Tom Proke. I'm at 383 Ellis Park Road. Spell your name. P is in Peter, R-O-K-A-I. I represent uh, not only the Condominium Corporation 1773, but also all the original opponents from 383 Ellis Park Road. Um, after the June original hearing, I believe it was, uh, the developer and the applicant and my neighbors uh, met a few times to come to an agreement. Though not perfect, I think we've come to a, an agreement where we are okay with the changes they've made. One of the uh, remaining issues was the 10 trees on our side of the property line, which would be negatively affected by this construction. We commissioned Bruce Tree Experts and Independent Arborist, which I think you have a copy of, to assess the trees and its potential impacts. The... What we have is a, as I call a good neighbor agreement signed by both parties where the applicant has agreed to pay our arborist, Bruce Tree, to an upset limit of $5,000 for root pruning, canopy pruning, and fertilization in order to help the trees survive the construction. So I, we were hoping if we can put this agreement into the record, uh, no. A private agreement. A private? So can't because the city can't police that. So. Okay. Can't. Okay. So hopefully it'll be honored and between. Okay. So then I just want to uh, okay. just state that everyone at 383 Ellis Park Road is okay with the changes that they've made. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank you. much, Mr. Prokai. Okay, sir. You're up next. Thank you very much. My name is Eligio Gaudio. I live at 18 Wendigo Way. Before I start, my neighbor uh, to the north of me, uh, uh, where is she here? Uh, Robin, Robin McCauley submitted a letter that uh, I don't think is on file, and I'd like to submit it to the... Uh, oh, you can pass it to me. To you? Yep. Okay, thank you. And wanted to make sure because I couldn't find... Yeah. 
Yes. And what I'm going to do for the committee, if I may, is I'm going to dispute that you can't see the, you know, the houses below and everything else by providing you with two photos I just took today from my backyard to the current property. That's one of the views from my backyard, and you can see the property fence. I will give you the second view. My property is some nine meters below, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my comments brief if I can. And I, I want to thank the committee before I forget to, to give me the opportunity. Um, as I said, I live at 18 Wendigo Way, and my property is to the east and adjacent to the subject property in the, year, uh, in the rear yard. The most sensitive area of development because of the area of topography, the gradient slope and the soil conditions in our rear yard, my property is some nine meters below the lands, as you can see. Along with the other affected uh, residents, I submitted my former comments originally in a uh, letter dated June 24th, uh, 2019. My uh, two main concerns were at that time the significant detrimental impact on my property and others, especially number 20, particularly with regards to and uh, respect to the stability of the slope, and secondly, the impact of the overlook and privacy with respect to the number of balconies that are being proposed. Um, the matter, as you uh, all know, was heard by the committee on June 22nd, uh, sorry, 26th, and was deferred in order for the applicant to have consultation with the area residents. Um, the plans before you today have not changed in any material respect from the original plans. Uh, for the following reason, I respectfully request that the application be refused in its present form uh, uh, based on the following reasons. One, there was no consultation with me directly. And you can see uh, where that property is relative to mine. Um, and that was, this was uh, directed by the committee to have consultation. Um, secondly, the, uh, the 20-some variances being requested individually and collectively, do not meet the test under the Planning Act. The variants are not minor and will have a significant impact and direct effect, not just on adjacent properties, but the integrity of the neighborhood, uh, neighborhood as a whole. Stability, and this is one main concern, stability of the slope, which uh, this proposed new dwelling will be built, is very sensitive. I'm not sure if the committee knows, but the entire Ellis Park was uh, and is built on just sand when it was built. Um, the risks and safety aspects related to the grade slope soils are paramount and need to be carefully considered and supported with geotechnical and engineering studies. Uh, four, the number of platforms being proposed is in no way minor, and no consideration has been given to the issue of overlook and privacy for the neighbors on when to go away. And, and number five, maximum permitted uh, floor space in Swansea is uh, approximately 3 point, uh, point 3, uh, 5 times the area lot. I'm not sure what was being um, said initially, but by my determination, the proposed dwelling will have a floor space of uh, 0.76 times the area lot or 2.1 times the permitted amount. Typically, the Committee of Adjustments and I support development has allowed up to uh, 0.5 to 0.55 times the area of the lot in the immediate Swansea area. I strongly urge the committee to refuse the application as proposed in its current form and again, thank you for your time and serious consideration on the matter. Any questions? Any questions of the speaker? No? 
In terms of, as I understood the presentation before, in terms of the floor space index, the number seems so high. I understand that because of the slope, the grade, and what is calculated, what's considered um, the size of the lot. And I it's the actual lot size when you look at the lot size. My understanding was if we looked at the entire lot size, that basically would be close to complying, correct? I don't. That's what I understood the applicant to say. Right, and I don't believe. A lot, all of the land isn't included in the Yeah, I don't, believe, I don't believe that's the case because it's 84 by, I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's not. It, I don't believe that the lot size is that big. In fact, um, I, if you have the plans in front of you, you could see the size of the lot. Have you been able to find it? The reason I, I know the size of the lot is because prior to the current owner um, purchasing this, uh, my brother who's a builder and I looked at the property and we were led to believe that you can only build a certain amount. That's why I know it's, a, it's not, the lot is not as big as it's being proposed. And as I mentioned, the privacy issue and the, uh, the slope are major concerns. Any other questions? Questions? Was I incorrect? Approximately 84 by 90. Yeah. But, my, but my calculations... You, Madam Chair, if... The, the frontage, according to the city records, is around 48 and change for frontage and then depth of 81.44. Right. But it's an irregular shaped lot, so you'd have to calculate. And the area is, oh, I just took, I think it was roughly 364, 364 square meters. Yeah. Okay, can we just finish with the opponent, please, and then we'll come to you and you can uh, justify your case. Thank you, Ms. Zoman. Is there any other questions of the speaker? Panel? I just, in terms of what you would be pleased with, you basically think this is too much. Too much building for this property. Uh, number one. But my biggest concern is that I note that the TRCA really hasn't had a good look at it in the size of the slope because we've had problems. And one of the issues with the current property when the condo was built is that um, it cracked and, and the whole, um, the whole uh, building itself has been under, I guess, uh, uh, you, you can't build it. And it cracked primarily because of the way the structure was. And that is, it's all sand on that property. It is not, you have to go down at least 60, uh, you know, 60 feet with piles to get any stability at all. I don't see anything like this. And I understand it's a process where the next people will look at it, etc. 
But there's no, we try to have this discussion outside, but there's no guarantee that that's going to actually happen. And my concern, uh, and, and I would hope it's the city's concern, is the stability, especially given the fact that they're looking at uh, top, of, uh, top of bank and lowering it and coming closer to the property line, which is uh, um, number 18, point number 18 you know, on the objections. Um, I just... I'm looking at the TRCA report from June 21st. Yes. To speak to your concerns, and they talk about given the significant risk of erosion associated with the subject site, additional geostructural and geotechnical engineering details pertaining to shoring, foundations, grading, and replacement retaining walls will be required prior to the issuance of a TRCA permit, but this should have no impact on the variances being requested. So they are asking them to provide you know, what they need with respect to all of the things you're talking about. Right, after, after, after it's been approved. Right, so they're saying this doesn't impact the variances themselves, but in order to satisfy the TRCA conditions, they are going to have to meet everything that they're looking for with respect to all these things, shoring foundation, right? and the retaining walls will have to be replaced. Okay, yeah, you were just saying, Madam Chair. And without yeah. that, you're not going to get a building permit. No, I, I, just, I understand that. I understand that. Yeah, you know from your brother's business, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But, but I guess the, my point is that TRCA is looking at it. So right. This, this report still stands. Okay. And, and um, has any consideration been given to the, to the um, basically the uh, number of platforms being, cons uh, being proposed? Um, well, they wouldn't. Because it's not really a minor. So I, you saw from the photo. I don't see any reports to, that speak to that, to be honest. Right. Other than the, uh, uh, yeah, they're for no, opaque, not. they're asking for opaque screening. So, okay. So the only thing, again, going back to the June meeting, the June 21st planning report, um, is asking that the, 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 the dwelling be constructed according to the plans and that the front, rear, second story, and third story balconies shall be constructed with opaque privacy screening or fencing that is permanent located along the north and south edges of the balconies to a minimum height of 1.8 meters measured from the floor of the balcony. Sure, and, and that's wonderful if you're the owner of that property, but if you step out and you're looking down on, on your neighbors, the opaque does nothing for it. Mm -hmm. But those are the only reports that we right. have. Right. And, and those are from the original application in June. So sure. they haven't made any, any other comments since then. Okay. Those reports still stand. Okay. Well, I leave it to the committee in your, in your good judgment. Okay. Thank you very much for your okay. time again. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Dewsbury, you can comment, please, on what's been raised. Uh, I'll just start off by covering the privacy concerns and then perhaps the designer can come up to talk about the TRCA issues. Um, so this is uh, the revised side elevation from the south. Um, and you can't really read the text, but that's with the opaque screening requested where planning, um, or applied where planning has requested it. And then the top balcony has been uh, removed in that location as well. Um, and I'll just uh, show some pictures from when we visited the site in the summer. I think there's a no. There is, but there's a front. There's still one on the third level, but it's been reduced in size so that it doesn't um, stick out quite as much. It's just on top of the roof where. Um, so these are the pictures taken in the summer, uh, looking south from the existing two balconies that are there. No, that's I, as much as I love Sorry. your comments, ask yeah, to not interrupt online. Sure. Like okay. This is it's straight east towards.
just from Google Maps. Um, so that's the condo building that's next door. Um, so as you can see, there are a lot of quite large balconies already in this location. So when the condo building was built, a certain level of overlook was considered um, for everyone to enjoy that beautiful view. Um, and that also shows just the tree coverage in, uh, between the houses there. So I think um, the designer can also come up and speak to the TRCA um, issues that he's gone through. Um, part of the five minutes. Sure. Um, sorry. Well, uh, good afternoon, uh, Chairman, Chairman Person, and uh, my name is Eddie Perez. I'm here on behalf of the, the owner and designer. Okay. Uh, we've been working on this project for a while now. We went through conservation, and conservation said that we can only build exactly the same footprint that we have there. So we have old drawings, I think they're on the file, which breaks down each floor, how many square feet they are, how many square meters. And when we were proposed our project, it can't be any bigger in GFA than what is there presently. So that was one of the items. And then um, through this whole process, uh, they told us that the square feet was, that we're getting that big numbers from is only this little portion here. It's only taking the yeah, it's only three square meters. Yeah, three square meters. Sorry, you can't see your pen. Sorry. Oh, up there. They're only taking a portion of it. That's the way they're calculating the, the lot area. So that's why the numbers, they look so grand. But in the scheme of things, the house itself is not any bigger than what's there. And it's not any higher. That was another thing that we went through all that process with them. We, we revised the drawings on a couple of occasions because we were a little bit over. We had to reduce it, not to be over the size that's existing. They made me measure the existing house and indicate each size of each room, each side of the perimeter. And that's how we came up with the numbers. We're not any bigger than what's there. We're only proposing to maintain what's there, and which is in very bad shape now. And they would like to build a new house on the same lot. So that's the gist of things. And maybe you can say something else. Thank you. OK. Is there anything further you have to add? Uh, just to summarize, um, when we went there in um, summer as well, there's large cracks that are forming in the foundation in the basement. Um, and the engineers are tracking them, but they are getting bigger. So we believe that by reconstructing a house here, uh, to modern building standards that have been checked by the TRCA and Toronto Building. Um, we believe that that's actually a safer outcome for neighbours by building to modern building standards rather than leaving a, a house that is um, somewhat falling apart at the moment. Panel members, do you have any other questions? I have one question. Um, I'm totally confused by balconies. On the second floor, there appears to be a balcony at the back. And on the third floor, there appears to be an L-shaped balcony on the back. But on the elevations, unless they've changed substantially, there appears to be two balconies <coughs> on the front and three on the back. And the planning recommendation only refers to balconies on the second and the third floor. So on your rear elevation, does that cover, well, which of those balconies is covered by the planning recommendation? A7. So the one, the one that's below the black line, which is still high, isn't screened according to the... Is that so your understanding I'll, as well? Yeah, I'll just explain that um, due to the, the established grade, which is well below the street level, um, they're counting the, the street where you enter off the street there where the car is as the second level. Okay. Um, and then above that is the third. So one of the five balconies that counts as a balcony is actually the front porch. Um, we enter from the street. Um, so that's one. And then here is that? 
So the one that's got the bubble around it has, that's the one that's been reduced in area. Um, it's still there. So that's on the third floor. Yes, that's it's on the third one, floor. It shows as a very long piece. It's just one balcony. That's just one balcony on the and third on the floor. the second floor, what is there? The second there's floor, two. there's two balconies, right? You look, I'm looking at drawing a seven. Okay, so there's third floor, one balcony. And there's here in the balcony. By the planning condition. That one's not covered by the planning condition. No, that's correct. So that it's still high. I'm sure the owner would be amenable to screens being placed on that one as well. If you've got the thing on the front. Yeah. So you've got one, two, ah. mm -hmm. But there's one on the front and then also the front porch. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Yes. That's correct, yeah. So it's, as the TRCA have requested, it's mostly on the same footprint, but um, there's one location where uh, the building has been shifted towards the street. Uh, I can put the site plan up to help explain. It's a balcony, so the main wall will be retained in that position and moved back on the north side. So the garage is now towards the street rather than um, towards the rear lot line. Um, yeah, that's so there's a few retaining walls. Um, that'll be subject of the TRCA application. Um, there's no variances required for um, any, I guess, retaining walls in the rear yard. That's more of a um, environmental and geotechnical um, aspect of the proposal. But that will be addressed in the TRCA and probably refined. They, they may have um, requests based on the various studies that are to be done. I'm not an engineer personally, um, but that is that will be subject to the geotechnical study that has been started and is um, will be ongoing through the TRCA uh, permit process. So uh, they will, they've identified the various issues in this report, but they haven't gone into a lot of detail yet. Um, that'll be the the next stage, I guess, once the the variances are um, if the committee chooses to grant the variances, then the owner moves on to the next stage. But uh, those reports can get very costly, and um, he doesn't want to commit to them one, until you know a design is on the table. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody? Okay. You have another question? No. Oh, okay. We'll take it into committee then. Discussion. Actually, I have one, one question of clarification. Okay, we're out of committee. Sorry. <laughs> the planning department references your <coughs> site plan uh, that was received by Committee of Adjustment on January 23rd. Um, you haven't changed the site plan, or have you? The site plan that we have today, oh. filed with this application for today's consideration, is it the same as the one that was in? Yes. I've just been looking. I can't see any changes. There, it's no, the, the only changes were to the overall height and the side main wall height. Okay, so which actual... is reflected on the site plan. Yes. The only reason I'm asking is because the site plan is referenced in the planning department report. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. It's the same site plan. Okay, we're okay to go into committee. Any other questions? No? All right. Uh, discussion?
I'm still struggling with the size of the decks. Um, two of the decks are three times what's allowed. Um, that sounds to me like it's very much a want. Um, and I'm not still not convinced of the rationale for that. That's probably one of the big things, especially uh, the, the huge deck out the front even. It's, it just doesn't seem to be any rationale that I can understand for those. Um, if, I, if I might, I think the, um, were I designing this, I would have had large decks as well um, as a designer. And the reason I think is, um, and I'm putting words in your mouth, but I think they're trying to maximize the, um, the attributes of the site. This is a pretty remarkable site. And I think that they want to um, um, have a variety of locations where they can celebrate the site on decks. And I, I, I think it's nothing more complicated than that. I think having said that, and your point. Um, I think my they, biggest concern was the deck on the front. Okay. And uh, the large deck on the front. Because of overlook or just? Just because I don't know what the rationale for that is. I mean, it's a streetscape. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what the benefit to that would be. Maybe okay, I should my have commentary asked was relative to the ones at the back, yeah. Yeah. The, um, the front, I mean, the front and back, there's a lot of, a lot of trees. Yeah. And one can argue the entire condo building is got decks running all the way along no, exactly. the back, overlooking the entire neighborhood. Yeah, and I can be convinced of the decks on the back. I'm still not totally convinced about the deck on the front, the lot, very large deck on the front. The house does sit back from the one beside it a little bit. So it's really not looked into the and what you're referring to is the covered veranda or is a balcony that's balcony. above it? The 11 meters squared. I'm personally, I'm not as concerned about that. I. In any other site, I would be a lot more concerned with the privacy issues, notwithstanding the fact that the uh, planning department has tried to address that with their condition. Uh, but I think we have to be cognizant of the fact that this rather large condo is basically next door um, with terrace decks overlooking everybody's garden. Again, to take advantage of the, of, of the landscape. Um, so given that as a constraint, or a condition, I, I am not that concerned with the decks. I'm, I suppose I'm more concerned with the, the gentleman's point about the stability of the soil and the stability of, but again, I believe that the MTRCA has been very careful in indicating that as you move forward, there are very specific requirements that you're gonna to have to meet. And if you don't meet them, you're not gonna get a building permit. Um, so I'm personally satisfied that, um, that the issue of stability is being dealt with as best as it can. And privacy, I believe, is reasonably well dealt with with the planning department report. Although I would argue that it shouldn't say the decks on the second and third floor. Now I've lost the wording. I think it should just say decks because there sure. are decks all over the place. I think it should say the, the, um, the balconies, the front and rear balconies should be constructed. That would be my recommendation, and, and that would then pick up that additional one, which is actually below the second floor, but actually is still considerably above grade on the, on the main, on the back. Based on those Sorry, concern, how do you want to change the wording? Does, would, it, does this not cover it? It's no, because it says second, second story and third story. I would just take balconies. that out. Balconies. Yeah, I would um, take second story and third story out. Yeah. It'll be the front and all rear balconies. Yeah, Shelby, and I think that that then address, and you didn't have any trouble with that. I anyway. don't think you need all, you can just put front and rear balconies, yeah, plural. That's north, nice. north and south side edges being screened or just this? North and south, no, because I think that's yeah. legitimate. So I, 
I, I think personally, I think that every attempt has been made to try and address the concerns. Um, no project is perfect, uh, but I do believe there's been a reasonable um, effort made here to address the concerns that have been voiced. I think MTRCA is going to uh, take care of your problem. I think the issue of privacy, which was an issue that we discussed last time, is covered by the planning department's um, conditions as well. So. Uh, based on that, unless anybody has additional questions, I'd like to move approval of the application subject to the planning department recommendations, but I would recommend rewording condition number one to say the front and rear balcony shall be constructed with opaque privacy screening. I would delete the reference to second and third story. Um, and with that, I believe that uh, it's a unique site. It has unique attributes. I believe that there's been um, very credible efforts made to try and maximize the advantages of the site in a way that is complementary to the community. I believe it meets the four tests for variance. Okay, I have a motion to approve the application, um, including the planning condition with the amendment made for the June 21st, 2019 report. Moved by Mr. Do I have a second? No, but no, I said the recommendations of planning. Yeah, yeah still time yeah, to just yeah. that one amendment. And you're seconding, mm -hmm. Mr. Byatt? Okay, all in favor? And are you your support? All right. You've worked to commit. <laughs> okay. Nice okay, your application's approved. Thank you. And Mr. Gaudio, did you complete the, uh, the decision request card? Yeah, please give, give it, it to, to the her. staff so that you're notified in case you want. The staff, it's when the decision comes, it'll be on there. Perfect. Thank you very much. You can also go visit our website or the T Lab website, and you can get no instructions. Worries. Okay. Uh, Fifty-two. Holmesdale Road. Okay, did you find your opposition? Okay. <laughs> okay, the opposition for Holmesdale, I need you to come and sit at the front here. And while you're making your way up, uh, panel members, we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. And we have staff reports from the manager of development engineering and uh, tree protection uh, are asking for forestry condition number three on the um, on B and C. Okay, what's your name, please? Good afternoon. My name is Ravi Patel. I'm from R and Design. Sorry, H can you spell your name, please? I R A V I. R okay. R V Patel. Yep. P A T E L. Thank you. Okay. And you have five minutes. Okay, uh, this is property 52 Homestail. We are doing a summary attach. Uh, we are applying for consent and min minor variance application. This is uh, identical what we did on the way on the I'm sorry on the west side of the property at the 72 Homestail, which we built by now, which we did this year. Uh, it's the same exact all the variances. We have 10 variances in total. Whatever it requires for the summary to transform this into a summary attach lot. And before we begin, I have to say. Sorry, back up. Can you can you tell me what address was approved for? Seventy two Homestale. Seventy two. Which is on the west side of the property. West side. Yes, it's right adjacent. Oh, is it? It is. The properties are the same size as these. It is. That was approved when? It was approved, I think, last year. By the committee or on a By the committee with the same variances. Exactly the same variances? Identical. And the same concept? Yes. Properties? I don't recall on top of my head, but I had to travel check, but it was identical. The frontages are the same as yours? The previous? Yeah. Uh, it may be fractions in a number, maybe very minor, but it was it was similar. Fraction bigger, the other ones. 
I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to say? or? Uh, yes. On the part one, which is A0704, Right. There are two variances, six and seven. There is a typo. Okay. When they made the variance, so six says front and rear, it should say front, and seven says front and rear, it should only say rear, which is on the zooming notice. Okay. I, so six should say front. Yes. Not take out rear. Yes. Okay. And seven, take out the front, only rear. I have a red line here if I can. Number seven should not say front main wall, it should yes. say rear main yes. wall. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is zooming noise. Mm -hmm. Main walls. Okay. And I have red line there. Uh, no, the other one is fine. Thirty one B. Alex, just he read, uh, it's just so you can see. Yeah, seven is rear. Yeah. So the altered okay. height of the main pedestrian entrance through the rear main wall will be. Um, I'm talking about the variance for the main wall height. Yeah, but, you said, yeah, but okay. So let's very let's make sure it's right because you're looking at the zoning notice. We're looking. We have the uh, the notice that was sent out. So I don't know if I changed the wrong ones. I am. I'm referring to public notice for A zero seven zero four. Part one. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you said part B, so okay. Hang on. So it's actually C. So zero seven zero four slash nineteen T E Y. Yes. Okay. Number six. Should we should take out rear? Yes. The third C forty one C. Is that is that part two? No. It is part one. Part one. Because if you look at the first variance, it says side yard setback on the western side. It's part one. Yes. Okay, so can you just say it again so we get this right? Because we were all looking at the, the other one. So number six should read the height of the front exterior main walls will be 9.7 meters. Yes. Seven should read the height of the rear exterior main wall will be nine. Yes, okay. correct. I mean, it's just because of the design and where the grading calculation oh, that's comes. Fine. Yeah, I think we uh, misunderstood. We had it on the other part. That's all right. Okay. Can I clarify one other thing? When you look at the um, the survey you've given us, unless I'm misreading it, um, this is number fifty-two. And you have an application to, to, to for consent to divide that property in half. And you said it's identical to 72, which according to this is the property right next door. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, how, how could that be? What, where did it's all the 60s the go? That's how the municipal numbering is. Yeah. So 70, so I'm right. So 72 is the property yeah, yeah. right next yes. door. Yes. Yeah. So in fact, you're saying where you would have this approved, you'd have four lots identical or close to identical. Yes. And you'd have four houses close to identical. Yes. Side by side. Okay. Thank you. Is it Problem. I can see the line. Yeah. 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 I just took trouble with it. It has the, you can see it, barely see it, but the line is out. Shows the split. Down, here, down the middle of the lot. Yeah. On a streetscape, it will look like we just developed at the same time. Yeah, okay. It's hard to see. Yes, it was. Yes.
there was no concern from the neighbor even at that time. Okay. Okay, is there anything else? We interrupted you. So is there anything else that you have to add here? Uh, no, I don't like to add much because we're doing the exact same development with what we did for 72. Okay. So if I can have you sit down, I'll hear from the opposition and we'll have you back. Okay. Okay, sir. It's your turn. I need you to come up to the mic. And then I need you to start with giving us your name and your address. And my name is Durval Ribeiro. Sorry, what's your first name? Durval, D-U-R-V-A-L. Yep. Last name is Ribeiro, R-I, be like Bob, E-I-R-O. And, and I live in 50 Olmsdale Road, next door. Okay, you're right next door. Okay, you have five minutes. That's all? That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. My first concern is the, the 40, 40, 47 meters, 40, let me see, 47 centimeters from the main line between my, uh, my neighbor and, and my, myself. And they says that this, they're going to be, the, when they, they, that's finished, the wall that's finished, they're going to be seven, 47 centimeters clear from the property line. I think the 0.47, and the applicant can correct me if I'm wrong, um, I think it's between the two new houses. No, no. He can so that's from the east side. The southern here, that's from the east side from the property line. You want me to show you? Well, because it's 46 on one and 46 yeah. on the west. The one that was. Oh, no, no. No, no. He's, maybe he's right. He's east east side, not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. I think I'm incorrect. But go ahead. That's it? Yeah. That's it? That's my main concern. Okay. I have a concern about the. Uh, the boxes, but uh, the city, you have permission, what am I going to do? Oh, you mean the modern design of the house? I don't call that the house, they call boxes, but it <laughs> doesn't call matter. Call whatever you want. <laughs> that's the style, that's the style. You're a number 50, right? I'm a number 50, yes, sir. Is that a, is that a, tri a, a, a triplex or? Where I live? Two units or how many? Where I live? Yes. Duplex. Duplex, okay, because I, I saw the site and I'm just looking at a photo of it now. No, no, that's duplex. duplex. Two stories high. Yeah. They're proposing three roof. stories. Yeah, it's a bit of a peaked roof. Yeah, Not much. The older side. Yeah, but so they're gonna they're gonna build over the driveway. Okay, well, let's see what the applicant has to say. That's your only concern is the setback from your property. Okay then. Okay. Thank so, you very much. Have a good day. Yeah, grab a seat. Let's see okay. what he has to say. Mr. Gloves. Okay. Done, oh, no, no, don't leave yet. We're not done. Don't leave. Yeah, just sit back. We're over here again. Bef okay, before you fine. start, I expect this gentleman <laughs> to come and affect east side elevation and height. Is there, has there been any consideration given to relieve that east wall? I mean, that's For the just three story high a wall, which it has absolutely no visual interest. Um, if I live next door to it, I would be objecting too. I understand that two things. First thing is a building code. As being an agent, I'm a planner and engineer myself. So, in a building code, we cannot do any windows with the, with the okay, windows. You could do okay. a variety of things. You could do materials, you could facet the wall. It doesn't necessarily can appreciate windows are going to remove his privacy. But really, that is... But from the streetscape perspective, when the house is built besides each other, you actually, I mean, no one can see a side yard okay. from the urban design. Okay. That cannot from the street, sir. No, but we still have neighbor. to look at the context of the entire neighborhood, not just if you're standing in front of the house. I mean, that's... Mr. 
urban design guideline only speaks about the front elevation Are you and speaking about the impact on the neighbor. I, I I'm arguing that this is rather inconsiderate. I can ask them if he has a concern, we can propose a different variety of material or a combination of stones and bricks and everything. We haven't had that conversation yet. We haven't have an opposed for that. And um, what are your views with respect to the setback that he... Uh, his concern is the proposed setback will be, right, what is the proposed setback? So if we're doing a stucco inside the proposed setback, so I, I'll, I'll make it clear, the, whatever the proposed setback is, 0.46 meter, mm -hmm. that's a clear sword, it will be. So everything will... Sorry, it's a clear what? It will be, only, it will be clear and there will be only sword. Okay, right? but his issue is he wants a bigger setback. So it's his issue was there shouldn't be anything within a 0.46 meter. So there is no stucco, there is no oh, encroachment. Is your, it was too close. close. That's what I understood his issue to be. And it, it does. I would like to get a clarification from a gentleman if okay, you sir, don't mind. You come back up to the front. Okay, Mr. Ribeiro, grab a seat again. Just have a seat. So your issue is the new proposed building is too close to your property, correct? Okay, so that is the issue. Sir, uh, we are leaving a 0.46 meter clear from our property. Are you okay with it? Okay, uh, hang on. You're not talking to him. You're okay. talking this way. Okay. So his issue is the setbacks too close. So I'm asking you... What can you do to mitigate his concern? Because, and as my colleague said, it's not, not just the, the proximity, but it's also a brick wall. I, I understand the massing of the wall, and we can come with the variety of architecture in it, different, choosing a different material on that wall. Okay, hold on a second. So, any, any questions? Uh, sorry, my client like to speak, if you don't mind. Can we? Okay, if he has something, it's about what we're talking about, sir. So, what's your name? Tony Smerglio. I'm the owner of Franton Homes. Sorry, how do you spell your last name? S-M-E-R-I-G-L-I-O. Okay, so I met outside with Dorval. Yep. Try, what he asked me, he said he saw the setback of 0.46 or 0.47. His concern was that my foundation would be there, but that my stucco or my brick would overhang that. that that's what was his concern. So I explained to him that the setback, nothing will overhang into the setback. He was concerned that I was going to actually put an inch and a half of stucco past the foundation wall, and it would be less than what's on the plans. Okay, we, I think all of us here think that heard, heard that he thinks that 0.46. That's what we heard. Okay, that's what we just talked about outside Maybe with him. One of the members can clarify. So, sir, is it you're okay if the stucco doesn't go past the 0.46 or you object to the 0.46? Or point, so you object. Is that 47? So you think it should be a bigger space? Well, it is bigger, but I don't know. The, 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 problem, the problem is. The problem is, uh, I want to make sure because the, the, the plans are already done. You people already issue the permits, but I see the permits in the. In the okay, I don't, we don't know. We're here for the and, variance. Uh, and uh, my concern is uh, that's on the paper, 47 centimeters from the, from the line, from my line, the, from property line between them and myself. Is that, a, is that satisfactory to you, 47 centimeters? Or it affects me. You want it, you want it larger. Uh, my friend, what, what I'm tell, <laughs> tell us what you're No, so we're are. here. They're coming to us to approve what they're planning. They don't have an approval yet. So we're asking you, are you objecting to the 0.47 meters? You have it to be bigger? Yeah, that's, is that what you're asking? Much bigger. Uh, I'm, so we're asking you, do you... So you don't, you want it a bigger space between you and them. Have a chance, I like to. Okay. So that's, I think we all understand. Right. Okay. So, 
I guess I'll ask the owner then, because is there something He's that can be done? Yeah, he has windows. He's going to be looking at a brick wall. Yeah, he also has a... He's got a driveway there, too, so he's not right up against me. No, there's two driveways there right now, one on my existing property and his. So I'll be eliminating my driveway, and but he'll continue to have his. I think we need to look at this perspective. The only reason this issue is an issue is because you're requesting a consent yeah. to sever a piece of property. Yes. And it seems to me that if you want to sever a piece of property, the onus is on you to come up with a development that fits within the context that you're building in. I would argue that on two fronts, the setback and this um, dominating, domineering wall, you haven't done that, which makes me question whether the severance is desirable. I'm, I'm not in a position to recommend approval of a severance that I don't think works, and your particular proposal for this half of the property convinces me that the severance is a bad idea. But the reason we went with this severance is because we did it on the one next door exactly identical. And you don't have exactly the same situation, though, because every site is unique. And you've got a neighbor here who ha I think has legitimate concerns. I understand. But the You're one on the next... additional concerns. The one next door, 72 homes, which now has become 70 and 72, has the exact same situation on the left side. Doesn't make it right. No, no, but that's why we... I saw it, and it's... It yeah. seems overwhelming because there's a lot of bungalows on the street with larger lots, yeah. the benefit of the driveway to provide space. So yeah, I agree. I know they're under, they're built, but yeah, that was my impression that it seemed to be a lot for that site. What we could do on his side, we could change the finishes on it to not see one just big stucco wall. Unfortunately, we can't change the height because we can't. Normally, we would do a reverse driveway. In this case, we can't, so we have to build up the house. Well, we only we build it up to because of the square footage. What happens to the main floor with the garage in it? There's nothing left on the main floor. I want to ask, you know, as, as I'm looking at the image of how the existing is a driveway on one side and driveway on the other. Of the two new homes I'm going to build? No, they uh, show up on the From the, the maps, current, on yeah. current homes. <clears throat> That's the correct home. Is yes, so the driveway right now is on the right, and he's on the right. Our two driveways are. So he's, he shares that driveway. Yes, he's this house here. I'm, that's his. Yeah, and that's the his driveway, the, and then I'm yeah. here with my driveway. Your driveway is on the... Um, right, no, right here is my driveway. The two drivers are connected. It looks like one big driveway, but yes. the yeah, back is split in half. Oh, it's split in half. Like yes, survey. Okay. split in half. So presumably his uh, driveway will be large enough for him to take his car to Yeah, there's two full drivers. They're not... They're not yeah, two sorry, two I, I, I couldn't quite figure out. Okay. So essentially, even though... I'm only 47 centimeters from the property line. It's, on my end, it's going to be wasted space regardless. There's going to be a walk. There's going to be no fence or anything. So he still has access down the side without any problems. He'll still have his full driveway and walking space on my side. Any other questions? No. Space on your side, 47 centimeters. The 47 centimeters, I'm not going to put a fence up to, um, on the property line. That's going to stay all open. <clears throat> Any other questions? No? We'll take it into committee then. Discussion? Madam Chairman, I think we have to bear in mind what we have before us. We have a, uh, an existing property with a house on it, and we have a proposal to sever the property in half to facilitate the building of two homes. I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that, providing the two homes that are being built. Um, can respect and reinforce the existing character of the community in which they are located. I don't believe this application does that. In fact, the variance applications on this particular, or this particular case reinforce to me the fact that the consent may in fact not be a good idea in the first place. Um, 
Therefore, my motion, um, Madam Chairman, is to deny approval to both the consent and the variances. Because I don't believe they're consistent with the area. No. No. Um, okay, I have a motion uh, moved by Mr. Nip to use the application. Do I have a second? I'm going to second it. Um, I have shared the same view. I have particular concerns with the uh, front and rear wall heights um, and the floor space index, notwithstanding the fact that I argued there is a set of semi store under construction or built. They do look overwhelming and large for the neighborhood, and I don't think one set of houses justifies um, or is tribute to it, it, it basically speaks to the character of the area um there's a lot of bungalows on the street there's a lot of large the lots are larger i don't see a lot of smaller lots like this and i don't think it meets the requirements for the consent or particularly the variances are quite high so i'm going to second the motion for refusal of the consent and the variances i have a motion moved by mr all in favor Okay, dissent. Yeah, myself and um, just by at dissent. Okay, so the applications refuse. Yep. Thank you. So, sir, the applications refused. Um, have you filled out the forms? Okay, the, can one of the staff maybe show this gentleman the, the card and if you can fill that in before you leave? Um. Okay, so final application is, um, yeah, <laughs> item number 43, 647 Beresford. Yes. And the oppositions, you're still here? Yes. Okay, we have before us a copy of the draft plan of survey, copy of the plan of survey, site plan, floor plans, and elevations. We have planning justification from Mr. Barbini, staff reports from the manager of development engineering, and we have um, tree protection, urban forestry is asking for condition number three on part one and condition number one on part two. Okay, can I have your on please? Record. Yeah, my name is Armando Barbini. I represent the owners of the property. I'm an urban planner. Okay. Um, Do you want to? Five minutes. Yeah, okay. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, I did submit the planning rationale report, and so I won't go through it uh, in detail. But, um, so, oh. Gentleman behind you. Yeah. Um, I did come to a conclusion that uh, this proposal will fit, will reinforce and we reinforce the physical characteristics of the neighborhood. Um, there, very specifically, there was a chart that I prepared which had uh, six other examples of the, of almost virtually the same type of application. And maybe I can just show you the photographs of those, of those homes that were built. Sure. Two of them were, haven't been built yet. Uh, they were very recent approvals, but I did uh, find on the website the drawings for those. And that's 583 uh, uh, Drury six, and 615 Beresford. You'll see 606A and 606B Drury are three-story homes. Um, 640 and A and B Drury also. Property at 617 and 619 Beresford and 544A and 544B Beresford. They are virtually um, very similar to what we we're proposing. And one thing that I also like to point out is if you'll notice that beside these properties, um, it's not a, they're not all bungalows in this area, they're not all two stories, they're not all two and a half story. And you'll see, especially on six, uh, 617, 619, to the south is a bungalow, and to the north is a bungalow. Um, the setbacks are reduced in many cases in this area. A lot, a lot of the side yard setbacks are reduced. There's a couple of other homes from the subject property. These weren't severances, but these are fairly new homes that were built. Uh, 654 Beresford, 
686 and 666 Beresford. And you'll see in all of these cases, you have one stories on one side, two on the other. Uh, these are mostly two-story, uh, 666, I think is a three-story by virtue of the below-grade garage. Uh, but it's a very eclectic area. It's not, it's not a homogeneous area where you've got all, either all bungalows or all two-stories. And also, the, you don't have all semis or all detached homes. It's a mixture. So looking at the variances being requested, we have a variance with respect to uh, lot frontage of 5.08 meters, but a required six. We have a uh, variance with respect to building length. Now the building length, I did uh, submit for the committee a, um, a diagram that showed the difference between what would be permitted and what is being proposed. So you'll see the, the rear 0.55 meters is the area of the home that's uh, extending beyond the bylaw requirement. I submit that that additional increase in length does not create negative impacts on the adjacent properties. The, the, darker, the darker part at the back, yes, yeah, yeah. When you look at the lot sizes, I mean, when you look at the official plan and the Planning Act, it talks about ensuring that the proposed lots are consistent with lots in the neighborhood and the adjacent plans of subdivision. So I did a, um, a lots study of the lot sizes in the area. And you'll note that, um, and it's in that report as well, 15% of the homes are either equal to or smaller, the lots are either equal to or smaller than the proposal. A total of 28 lots are smaller than the bylaw requirements, so an undersized lot is not uh, new for this area. And of, of interest, and uh, I'd like to point out that only 5% or 5 lots in this area have frontages equal to this, this existing lot. So in fact, this existing lot is one of the anomalies in the area. Uh, I know there's another one, I think, next door. But other than those two, uh, most, most of the lots are smaller in size. I, I guess, and let's open, open to questions as well. Now, we did, I did speak to the neighbor, and she will speak for herself. Um, some of her concerns were with respect to ensuring that during the construction, uh, the proper shoring gets put up, but that let her speak. And, uh, okay. Maybe they have questions. Um, panel members, do you have any questions for Mr. Barbini before we hear from the opposition? Well, the only thing I would like to hear a lot now, I don't really have that. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. So if I could have your name and address to start. Hi, yes. Um, I'm Mary Jo Dwyer. D-W-Y-E-R. My first name is Mary Jo. Um, I live at 645 Beresford, so just to the south of the 647. Uh, we've lived there for 36 years. The house is 102 years old, our house. And our biggest concerns, which is what we were talking about, is that they are requesting that the house that they're going to build, the semis that they're going to build, but the one that's closest to us, is going to be closer to the property line than is allowed. And our concern is for our the, the home itself, the, our basement and our... The, the brick, and um, we were just concerned about all the digging and the, and the new development, that it, it'll um, affect our house, that we could have flooding, we could have damage to our, our basement, and uh, that's our biggest concern. So that's what we were talking about outside. I spoke with the owner um, by phone, and he's willing to put into writing some guarantees that should anything happen, that they will be totally responsible for any repairs, any damage. That's done, which my husband and I would be happy with. As for the rest of the house, um, yeah, there are a lot of houses that have gone up that are tall and skinny. Our house is tall and skinny, so it's, it's, it's the neighborhood. And some are bungalows, and a lot of bungalows are being redeveloped, and the roofs are being torn off, and that's some of the pictures that you saw. That's what's happened. So the, the neighborhood is changing, and people need housing, so those are all good things. We just want to make sure that our home is protected and that we still have access to our backyard, and uh, we're still able to live there. <laughs> so that's 
That's why I came. That's my biggest concern. Okay, so the, the agreement would be between the two of you. It's mm -hmm. not something that the committee enforce or have jurisdiction over. No, I understand that. If you have an agreement, then... Well, we have a, and a, a verbal agreement, so I'm hoping that the owner Maybe that... If it makes you more comfortable, you get something in writing. That's what I'm asking sign for. Sign it and mm -hmm. you know your neighbor and you're comfortable, then yeah, I'm sure that it'll be honored and... Yeah, that's what, that's what has to happen. <laughs> uh, yeah. we, we don't have jurisdiction. I understand that, yeah. So if, if this all goes through and all the variances go through, um, that's, what, that's the biggest concern we have, is that it's going to be closer, mm -hmm. there's going to be a big wall, but um, anyway, we'll have to work that out. <laughs> we'll get yeah, used to it. Change is never, never easy. No, it's not easy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. I just want to express to the committee that we also, the owner also did speak to Mary Jo, uh, Mary jo yeah. and said that they um, have done this type of construction near other houses before and what they usually do is put shoring down just to give her some assurance. That's part of the building permit process too, right? They will put some shoring right on the lot line or just you know inside the lot line to ensure that none of the foundation, her foundation, the slips or the soil slips or anything, and then they build a foundation wall and they build up, you know. So, and she seems to be happy with that. Well, it sounds like the neighbor's willing to uh, do some things to mm -hmm. help ease her concerns. If mm -hmm. you can put it in writing, that would probably be great. Yeah. And give her more comfort. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. That's okay. what I'm working on. <laughs> All right, well, you keep working on it. All right. Okay. Okay. All right, panel members, do you have any questions? I do. Um, well, obviously heard the discussion from the last application. Yes. I have the same concern here on your left side elevation. But a rather substantial uh, three story wall. Now, her situation is not quite as bad as in the last case. Yes. Yeah. Um, a large portion of that wall is not clearly visible as her house. Mm -hmm. But the portion at the back. Extends beyond the back, yeah. Third, um, element in fact. Have you given any consideration to what you might do to break up that side wall? Uh, there is an obvious solution. You put a mansard on the front, pack a mansard on the front elevation, like possibly take it as well. Yeah. I think that that wall is a bit. Uh, I'm sure the owner would look at that. I, I'm not a designer, so I can't say, uh, but let me just take, I'm taking a look at the side elevation and the back elevation. You're right, the front does have the mansard roof. Um, the, the, this area, you'll note that there's no requested variances to height as well. Yeah. Is it permitted three stories and 11 meters? But yeah, I mean, you know, we're proposing. Um, I can't see why not, uh, as, because the the mansard roof at the front does wrap around a little bit, and then it stops. I, I think it's for looks. Maybe they can continue it along. I, I I can't say for sure. I don't know if that was a uh, if that would help. Uh, Still going to be a big hole. Yeah. Well. I mean, well, but, but the look, yeah, maybe that, stucco, because this is brick, I think, or uh, no, it's stucco on the side, yes. I'm not suggesting a condition that you do a specific thing like do this out of the other thing. Right. I am saying that I think that that side wall could be improved. It is a large, it has a huge uh, impact on this lady's back garden. Mm -hmm. She's lived there for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't think that she should have to suffer because of the development on your lands, and I would encourage you to look at um, improving the quality of that side wall. Okay, we could, I mean, I, we can look at it, absolutely. The uh, only thing is I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, how we would uh, look at it and it was it something that the neighbor would like to work with us on or something, I, that's fine, you know. Um, but I can't, yeah, I'm gonna talk to the designer, but I, I can't do anything right now on the fly kind of thing, yeah, okay. No, but I hear you, I hear you, just. That is a suggestion. But, yeah, no, understood, I mean, the third floor is stepped back, so it doesn't go as long as the other floors. So the length variance also doesn't isn't affected. It's, slight, yeah. it's yeah. a slight <laughs> it's break because of the balcony. Yeah. 
Well, We've got a balcony up there. They're the balcony. looking down on us anyway. Well, we can, we can uh, add a uh, privacy screen. We're, we're proposing one in between the two balconies mm -hmm. because of the setback, but we can put them on the outsides of the balconies as well. I'd privacy screen. You like that? Yeah, okay. that'd be very good. Sure. That's not a problem. And we can look at the, the roof design, see if we can bring the mansard around. Of course, I mean, that's not the only solution. I just... No, yeah. This mural with big trees. Heavy. All right, any other questions? So the suggestion there was that there be um, 1.5 meter screening on the north side of the top floor deck on lot one and on the south side on lot two, and you were agreeable to that. Yeah, we're amenable to that, and actually the plan shows a screening between the two houses as well. Mm -hmm. So we essentially have three screen, three 1.5 meter high screens. So what are you be... proposing, a fence or opaque? Uh, the details haven't been haven't been worked out, but an opaque an opaque screening. These days, a lot of people put uh, glass that's kind of like a glass block or something, or yeah, frosted right. glass. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Along the north and the south side of each of the decks. of each of the decks. Yeah, and one could be shared. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Okay, who's going to move the motion? No. <laughs> Madam Chairman, I'm, I'm prepared to move approval of the variance, the, the motion for, sorry, for consent. Um, I, I believe that the applicant has made a, um, an extremely good effort in providing us with a, a lot analysis, which is quite convincing, that this particular consent is in keeping with the, um, the, the character of the neighborhood in the area, and I don't have the same difficulty with this consent application that I had with the last one. So I'm prepared to move approval of the consent. Okay. I'm going to second it. I agree. I think the lot analysis in this case convinced me. Uh, we're going to talk about the other case. There is no lot analysis, and uh, just because there's a set of semis next, to get it. In this case. So here you've made great efforts to show that this is one of the larger lots on the street, and that dividing it is not out of character. It meets there's 15 or so in the area that are ha at this. Standards. So I agree 100%. The lot analysis, I wish we had them in every single consent we get. We need them, and they're crucial. All right. So the, are you I'm seconding, seconding the motion for consent? <laughs> so I have a motion. In standard conditions, yeah. Sorry. Motion, yeah, that's fine. Moved by Mr. Nipple. Second. Yeah, can we do them all at once, or do you want them separate? Madam Deputy, separate. Okay. Okay, so then the motion is um, moved by Mr. Nipfel, seconded by Ms. Valentini, including the standard consent conditions to approve the, um, the consent. All in favor? Okay, so let's move on to the, um, the variance. Um, yeah, I, I think it was just about what's adjacent to her. Right. So, you're up again. Um, <laughs> no, the, the, the problem I have is I, I don't have any difficulty with the consent. I, I am not convinced by the variances, and I appreciate that there is not a, <clears throat> excuse me, there isn't a requirement or a, a variance request for height. But I would argue that the variance request for floor space index um, generates the height, and I have some concerns with 
height, as you heard from my commentary earlier. I'm not convinced that these buildings need to be this high. Um, and on that basis, I'm, I'm not making a motion now. I'm not prepared to move the variances at this point. I think more work needs to be done to design houses that fit within the property. I do. I agree with the frontage, but right. I, I'm concerned okay. with so the I'm, massing. I will. I understand your concerns. Um, I think the variances in this case, if we're going to compare them with what we just heard, are more, much more reasonable. Mm -hmm. There is no height variance triggered, even though it is a three-story home. I understand what you're saying about the, the, I suppose, the length of the building, but that the variance for building length is minimal, in my view, and the floor space index is not out of control like some other variances we've seen. So I am happy to move the variant, uh, move a motion for approval of the variances and we have, no. So part one has four stream number three. That's right, okay. Part two has four, four stream, stream number, number one. one. And then the engineering condition. They're on the consent. They're on the consent. Yeah, they would be on the consent. So that. Yeah. Yes, this, thank you for the reminder. 1.5 meter screening on okay. the open. Yes, south. of course. North, 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 south. north, south. north south. south side. And you'll put it in the center, but that's yeah. fine. And that one too. <clears throat> okay. So motion to approve um, both of the um, apps um, has been moved by Ms. Valentini. That includes the and then uh, uh, screening, opaque screening on the north side of the decks. Do I have a seconder? Second. All in favor? Okay. So you Thank have you your very approvals. much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have you filled in the decision request card? Yeah. Okay, so well, we stand adjourned then at 530. <laughs> you have a little faith. Uh, Okay, tell me the truth. What's the latest meeting? What's the latest meeting? Uh, the one that I've been at? Yeah. The latest I've ever been at. Two council meetings that ended at 4.30 in the morning. Is everybody's mic off?